will call the meeting of Wednesday, June 9th, 2021, 9, 10 a.m. to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Point of order, Madam Chair from Clearview TV. Yes. Um, could we be allowed to record the meeting? Yes, you and may. And also the video, I'm unable to see uh, Commissioner Tassad. Perhaps That's the okay. camera can okay. change a little bit. Thank you. There we go. Very welcome. Thank you. I don't think the public needs to see my eyes. I was going to say, <laughs> it's better that they see you than me. Well, they get two angles. Remember, there's no mask. Just keep smiling. Look ahead. <laughs> I know. It's nice with the mask because I know, even though I hated them. Yep. Um, I just want to make a brief statement that um, from, from now on, our meetings will start at 9 o'clock, whether we're all present or not. And I uh, expect that if the chair is not here at 9, that whoever is here will start the meeting at 9 o'clock. So... There we go. Okay. Um, additions to the agenda. Highlighted in red. Hello. Okay. Put my glasses on so I can read the highlighted red. Right. <laughs> there was a lot. I thought that would be easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a non-public session, uh, which will be under RSA 91-A colon 3, Roman numeral 2, parentheses G. We have a meeting with Sheriff Rashardi on White Lake Dental Agreement. And then we are going to be recess recessing, I believe, hopefully around 1030 um, for a non-meeting with legal counsel. And I believe, oh, and then, okay. And then non-public sessions, we have two that are under RSA 91-A colon 3 parentheses 2 uh, colon C and 1 which is RSA 91A colon 3 Roman numeral 2 under A. I believe those all the added. So we will have approval of the meeting minutes and here is Matthew. Sorry, wait for you. Late. That's okay. Dealing with some issues on the farm this morning. That's fine. Your packet is in front of right. you. Thank you so much. So, Matthew, I made the statement that we will be starting the meetings at 9 o'clock. Okay. No matter who's here or not here, and that I would expect that if I am late and you two are here, that you will also start the meeting at 9. That's regardless. Okay. I'll we'll be happy to do that. Good. Thank you. So we are at the point of the June 2nd meeting, minutes. Okay. Have you had time to read? I have a time. Okay, to well then we can wait till later. Okay. Okay. Do we have any media questions? Nothing on the chat. Seeing none, do we have any public input? Seeing none, uh, the manifest approval for June 2nd, 2021 was $170,904.86. Uh, Blueberry Field, Dale Drew will not be here. Um, he okay. will be here at, well, we're talking about this. They will be here at 5 o'clock to install the poles and the laser. Um, I asked the question about the laser being able to mm -hmm. affect a human. They said uh, highly unlikely they're going to be, it's going to be mounted on a big pole and you have to actually look into it, directly into it for at least 30 seconds, which is highly unlikely because the laser is constantly moving. So. May I ask you a question? Yes. Is it possible that the laser could malfunction and stop moving? You know what? There? I think if you want to, I, 
<laughs> I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into this. No, no, but they're going to be that here at be 5 o'clock okay. this afternoon oh, good. to install everything, and okay. Jeremy's going to be there, so he would be the okay. person if you would like to. I notified Will, yeah. um, and he doesn't know if he'll be able to be here. But we have that 3 o'clock meeting, and if it's like last week, you'll be here at 5. That's right. <laughs> so. Because um, Super. Can't so wait. I think that's the best rule. Because then they could put a switch. They can yep. turn it on. Yep. I so that would be the, right and they're going to be right here, so okay. perfect. Keeps me. Okay. okay. So, wow. We're already up to the department head report. Superintendent? Good morning. Good morning. You have the floor. Thank you. Let's see. So, busy times at the jail. Uh, <clears throat> last uh, month or so, as we know, uh, <clears throat> we contracted the provider of medical services of the inmate population through Prime Care, which is going very, very well. Uh, very, very well. Um, they've taken over our MAT program, which is going well. Uh, we've did some critique into the security aspects of it, which is which is working as well. Again, but change with every with any. In any, you know, with anybody or any persons, you know, they always struggle with it. But um, it, it, people are overcoming and adapting, and, and uh, positive things are coming out of it. So, Good. and the inmates are uh, happy with the medical services that are being provided. They haven't got any complaints on any of that. Um, but, you know, so I can, can't say can't say anything negative right now in regards to that end of it. It's, great. It's, great. it's going great. very well. Great. It's going great. very well. Transition was very very smooth. Uh, so. Uh, let's see here. Of course, we have <clears throat> we awarded the bid for the new cameras to be installed through the Priya grant um, with uh, Brandywine Company yep. last week. Uh, been in top contact with them. Hopefully, scheduling the start of that project. Hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood. Right now, is tentative speaking is the first full week of July. We should be in to start that project. The adding the additional 18 cameras to our current camera security system. So. So a lot of, lot of, like I said, a lot of big things happening. So that'll, that'll be a positive direction. Um, now that we have our programs director and case manager in place and uh, everybody's settled in, um, <clears throat> we're starting to do uh, start up our programs again, trying to get back to a little bit of normalcy. Of course, with COVID, uh, the last year it was tough to do a lot of programs. Uh, and then also uh, the changing in, in our case managers and our programs director and getting new new uh, individuals in back in place and training and up to par what we're going to be teaching for classes. Uh, uh, we are now getting a little bit of normalcy and, and starting to open up, starting the programs. The, uh, we got three individuals set up to uh, start our trust program. Hopefully uh, next week they're already gone through starting all their assessments this week. And uh, so that should be up and running. And many other things. We're looking at uh, <clears throat> getting some AA services back in there. Um, so, you know, so moving forward with that, and like I said, getting back to a little bit of normalcy. And all, also in signing up visitations as well, which has been sometimes with COVID. Uh, granted, we did, we are working with uh, getting, which we spoke about a, well, probably six, seven weeks ago now, in regards to the video visitation systems, um, which are not up and running yet. They haven't started the construction yet. But uh, so just opening up visits, basically kind of, what we were originally doing, a little bit more of a COVID protocols behind that, though, uh, for safety safety reasons, um, and hopefully going to start that up next Monday. That's the direction that we're looking at right now, because it's been some time since family members have been able to come in and see their, their loved ones and whatnot. So, again, trying to get a little bit of normalcy back. Um, That'll be a good morale booster. Sure. Yeah, we're hoping. Um, be good for the families too. Yeah, ex exactly, yeah, exactly. Can, I would observe. You've done a terrific job over there, containing that. the pandemic and, and the virus. And you know, when when we went in for the inspection, it's the cleanest place I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's cleaner than hospitals. That's the place was in terrific shape. We yes. try to go above and beyond and stress the cleaning and getting yeah. you know constantly trying to stay on top of that. Yeah, which, which just can be a battle. But, but I appreciate you. appreciate yeah. you noticing it and, the, and uh, the support on that. I'll let my people know as well. Yeah. You're doing a great job. So. Excellent. Uh, we're still over there at the jail. We're still um, mandating a mask policy in the uh, 
not so much if you're in your office, you're okay, but you make population, officer, staff members, stuff like that. We're kind of following prime care's guidelines on that with CDC, where they are a medical provider. I think it's the best, mm -hmm. best to follow their guidance on that and direction as far as when that should be lifted and how we should be handling that. Um, so nothing's really changed on that, and we're still holding, holding uh, solid with the mask mandates and quarantines, uh, time frames for. Uh, you know, for our population, new population coming in, how long before we put them in general pop and all that, just for those protocols to maintain safety and security of the whole environment. I make mean, no primarily safety with COVID. Mm -hmm. So, uh, been working with Bob Murray for a few weeks now, providing him some an inmate or two to uh, do some work around the campus, which has been going well. Um, hoping we can continue doing that for a little bit longer, uh, anyhow, with the current population we have. But, of course, our pop sentence populations can change quite dramatically sometimes. So. What do you have right now? In, oh, how many? I have 51 inmates as 51 of this morning. Inmates. So, mm -hmm. as of this morning, that's what we had okay. when I looked. But. So, uh, as I, I, re I recall from a couple of years ago, when I, I'd come and pick up pay from Will, mm -hmm. and inmates would help load, and mm -hmm. they seem to enjoy the work. They seem to enjoy being having a chance to do the work well, and get, getting out. And it, it changes their day, it changes their environment. Yeah. They're outside of the cell, they, their time goes by faster rather than sitting in a, yeah. in a day room, you know, just trying to watch TV or play cards or whatever. Uh, when you're on the, I mean, being outside, getting fresh air or whatever it might yeah. be. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's the kind of the Benny Civic to them, and, and, and they appreciate that. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but again, our. Right now, we don't have enough current Senate's population to support the full, you know, manning the farm, plus also COVID, you have to kind of pay attention sure. to that, so. But we're uh, you know, providing what's, you know, services that we can provide, you know, you know and helping out with Bob as best we can. Okay. So, um, really don't have any, any else further. I mean, like I said, we've got a lot going on. And, um, Trying to maintain staff and, and, and maintaining a positive attitude. Uh, Where are you with staffing? Are you? We're currently short of down four staff members. Four staff members and what? Oh, excuse me. And, and what degree? Uh, that's what we're short. We're short four officers. Four officers. Yeah, okay. from various shifts. Yeah, shifts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Want something else for us, Madam Chair? May I? Oh. Yes, you may. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to follow up on, on, on the MAT. Yeah. Uh, have we implemented the full expanded MAT yet, or we're just doing well, the same? We haven't been starting to do any introductions yet, if that's what you're asking. Oh, okay. Uh, we're, we're always been providing the, the subject, suboxone subtext um, to, to the standards that were already pre-approved. Right. Um, individuals that's come in, it's already been prescribed, it, stuff like that. But we haven't begun Carroll County introductions yet. Um, we're gearing up for that. We've made the policy changes um, to different directives. Um, we're not going to reinvent the wheel here. We're using other county facility policy procedures that are already set forth and already been approved, and and just changing some language that meets our requirements. I and mean, you know, names, you know, our facility name, stuff like that. Right. Uh, so we're making it as simple as possible. Um, it's not going to be a huge uh, task to take on, other than I don't foresee us jumping, say, from hypothetically, you know, 15 to 50 inmates. I, I don't see that happening. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see our whole, it doesn't work that way. There's criteria, if you, they have to meet certain standards, they, you know, they have to attend MAT uh, classes, this, you know, so it's not just be, oh, I want this, okay, it, it, you know, so I don't foresee it, but I mean, I see it increasing, mm -hmm. maybe five to ten individuals, but I don't see our entire population being on it in any way, shape, or form. And that's even looking at other facilities that are currently doing in, 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 in a bigger uh, bigger platform, a uh, bigger stage, uh, such as Rock in Franklin County in Massachusetts, uh, mm -hmm. where they're doing, you know, methadone, and they're doing it all where they become their own pharmacy. That they, they, you know, I think they have 20, 25, um, last I knew. Uh, so, I mean, you know, a population of 150, that's really not much different than what we're carrying as far as percentages, you know. So I don't see it getting out of control as far as numbers go. Okay. 
I, may I ask a follow-up question? Yes. <laughs> uh, the introductions will be done under full uh, doctor supervision. Full doctor supervision and uh, medical, you know, complete medical care providers with, uh, okay. with uh, prime care who's taken over all of every bit of the MATs Excellent. and also our case workers and okay. our current uh, programs director. Um, there's classes that are requirements that they have to that they have to go to uh, okay. to provide them to maintain and then they have to be, maintain certain requirements to stay on uh, and then try to set them up on the outside to continue so we make them productive to society and get rid of that criminal mindset basically. Right. Yeah. Um, might I ask that when you finish your policy that mm -hmm. we would get a copy of it just for our absolutely whatever absolutely. the criteria is I'd be interested to see all that. Absolutely. We should have that finalized within the next, okay. probably by middle of next week. Okay, that's fine. So I will, get that, I will get that to you. There's a couple languages in there that Prime Care and I are back and forth with a little bit, of just proper wording. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That's all. I know there was a lot of, this was a big issue in the community. I know You're at one me. point, every week in the paper, even though it's going to affect, what, five, ten people? I know there was a lot of concern, and it's yep. an important issue. It's an important issue, and, and so, um, as everyone knows, I was against it. I was not against, and I will read it, the, I was not against this, the MAP program. Mm -hmm. I was against, I wanted to make sure that the people that were making the decisions were the right people to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I didn't feel that we had that in the, in the jail. Mm -hmm. So no, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, yeah. that we're doing it, and I think we're doing it the right way now. I, I would I would agree with you. If it's going to do, you're going to do it. You have to do it correctly. Well, I, mean, I think bringing in prime care and all that they bring to the table, table really makes helps. me feel a lot better. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not their first rodeo when it comes to no. MIT, and they, Yeah, oh. and, and with the with the doctors they they brought in and yeah. all the nursing staff yeah. and the processes that they're familiar with. I mean, the medical services that the inmates are getting currently now is tenfold more than what they were. I mean, every day. The, where, you know, I, even myself, because of staffing, I've been down there doing sick calls with inmates, bringing them down. What, and it, it's a daily thing, Monday through Friday. Um, okay. mm -hmm. it's, it's not the norm. <laughs> I know there was a lot you know, before, but so. it's, it's increasing. Every yeah. Day. yeah well, it, you, it really when is. When you did the tour, you saw it. Yeah. It's increased. I think right. we have top it, notch it, care. It right. has yeah. increased. Yeah. I think that was one of our best decisions. Yeah. I would agree. And being responsible, I mean, we are responsible. Yeah. And, 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 we have to take care of the inmates. So. Um, Commissioner Sorry, you have any questions for the superintendent? I do not, Madam Chair. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Yes. May I ask the superintendent a question? You may. With your permission. You mentioned before, Superintendent, <clears throat> about complaints, that you haven't received any, any complaints. Mm -hmm. Is there a complaint form or a complaint process mm -hmm. that the commissioners are looped into so they can see what those no, I mean, yeah, at any time, it's in the rule book if they I mean, who they can file complaints to. But most grievances, it's just, it's done by, uh, you know, in steps. You just start off with an officer and then, you know, almost like a ranking structure. So can an inmate file a, a complaint to commissioners? Absolutely. They can, um, and it's the it's written out in the inmate rule book. Uh, primarily, all inmate complaints are normally stay within house, get, uh, and there's a process for how those, those get answered, and uh, we, we answer those. The only thing we've ever had is, you know, like I said, is uh, the, the concerning MAT is just the process, you know, yeah. changed a little bit because of security reasons. And they're like, oh, okay, now I understand it. But, mm -hmm. you know, other than that, that's it. So, well, the does that answer your question? Thank you. The security is a pretty important aspect. I mean, we're dealing with some strong, mm -hmm. uh, some strong pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, any other questions, comments? Um, we are, I will await now a motion to go in non-public. We are having a non -public. I'm not participating. Yes. Okay. It's I will see you guys later. It's right here. Oh, I, I'd like to make a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91A32G. And I will second. All those in favor, roll call vote. Commissioner Platch? Yes. And McCarthy, yes. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to come out of non-public and seal the minutes for the non-public session. I'll second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We are now back in our 
normal commissioner's meeting. Gavel is back in. Please? Do we have any gavels back there? 944. Thank you. Just for him. Joe is here. Treasurer. You are unmuted. Oh, should we have to do that now in public again? No, it's okay. Okay. You're good. Okay. So is Commissioner Tassari going to be here? Yes. She will be. Yeah. I didn't see her. Maybe she went down to the office. Yeah, she did. You want to tell her she can come on back up? Yeah, because I got some important information I want to give out through you. Hi, oh. is Commissioner Tassari down there? Could you let her know the non-public's over and ask her to return to the meeting? Thank you. Bye. Good news? Bad news? Oh, it's all good news. You never have bad news, Jim. No. That's good. Okay. Are you tapping me off? Is that something else? Oh, yeah. Oh, me. I don't tackle anything. Um, <laughs> Chris, our HR director, is here. Chris, do you have something that you would like to say to us? or? Yeah, yeah. well, um, please come on up. Okay. Kim will be up shortly. Oh, but the week. Week. Yeah. Yeah. Staying, huh? um, and you can go. go ahead. Um, no, I just wanted to come up and introduce um, formally to the commissioners and everybody. Um, this is Michelle Rogers, our new HR generalist working at Mountain View. Um, she started last week and has jumped in head first and seems to be getting her bearings. And oh, they're greeting you nicely over there. They are very nice. They it's are. A great they're very stages. nice people. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Yeah, it's a beautiful building. They really maintain it well inside and out. Oh, welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope that you enjoy it and are here for a long time. Well, thank you for the opportunity. So no, you... thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think uh, she'll be a great fit. And if you get any emails or messages from a Michelle, that's probably her. So just wanted to let you know. Great. All right. Nice to meet you. Well, Thanks for your time. You're okay. Thank you. If you see Kim coming up, you can introduce Michelle to her. Okay. Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I, like, I like meetings like that. Yes. Well. Always fun. So um, we have a few minutes before Dominic arrives, so why don't we skip to the treasurer's report? And if you want to wait for Kim for that, you want to give well, us something else? I'll, I'll, I know I'll, you have the Hales thing for yeah. me to sign. I've got. Uh, the uh, final audit for Hales from Bachelor Associates. Oh, I gave all of them one already. They already have them? <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> sorry. They already have them. When I got it, I put it in their boxes. I'm sorry. I should have told you, you that. copies? It should be in there. Is that it? Yep, that's it. That's it. Uh, okay. I haven't read it yet, Joe. If you want to kind of... So I've, I've been through it. Yep. Um, the audit came out um, as very well, quite frankly, um, and I'm glad that we got it done because it's been a while since it was done. Um, take your time and go through it, um, and if you have any questions after you've had a chance to peruse it, I'll be glad to try and answer it for you. If I don't know the answer, I'll be glad to make one up for you. Yeah. Well, and Bonnie's here, so we can ask yes. her. Um, he was just talking about the Hales audit. We got the final audit. It's in the okay. okay. So the next thing on Hales I've got is a couple of deposit one I show you that uh, I just need you to look at. I've already signed. Looks like there's three of them. Yep. Uh, and then the final thing is a uh, building permit for a new construction at Hales, uh, which has been approved by the Hales Association. You need to look need, at the uh, commission's okay. signature on it. I, I don't care about these. I'm more interested about the other thing. But I understand. Um, I got a call that they're waiting for this. That's yes. why you brought it for today, the, so that they can start the process. Right. Oops, I'll get this back to you. So my thing is, we were trying to do a monthly board director. Uh, yeah, board, not board directors, but for a selectman meeting once a month for Hales. Right, right. So I'm wondering if we should do a quick 15-minute 
every week? If we have, I don't know how to handle that because there seems to be things in between that we have to take care of. Yes. We, oh, that's a nice looking house. Yeah. So what would you two, what would you two recommend? What would you prefer? Do we do a, go Here, back to having Here's my meeting? question, Madam Chair. Yes. If we were like any other board of selectmen, right, and a need like this arose, they would either have to get into the next meeting or a notice, a meeting would be noticed outside the time frame. Right. So Why are we special? Why don't we notice a Hales meeting and and address that? I do, I'm really uncomfortable not giving the public the opportunity. What happens when these people's neighbors come to us and they're the only one in the association that doesn't want it, but they were denied their opportunity to be heard on the building permit? I'm fine because you guys can override me, but I wouldn't feel comfortable signing that without a publicly noticed meeting. Go ahead. Public notice meeting has taken place with the association, and they're the ones that approve it. It's a formality for the uh, selectmen to sign it afterwards. If it's simply a formality, then my signature shouldn't be required, then. It's kind of not. <laughs> then good. Then I, then I'm going to defer it to my colleague. She's pretty smart. I have she knows his stuff. Which colleague would that be? <laughs> you both in agreement. I always. <laughs> <laughs> Could we just notice it if we're going to? She makes a good point. Kim makes a good point. And, and, and you know, why don't we notice? A I just don't know why. Week, just in case, you know? I don't know okay. why we're special. I, I, if it were any other town. But it's really not. It's unincorporated to township. They don't follow town. Correct. You know, it town just rules. makes me nervous doing th things like this that, and putting my rubber seal on it when I wasn't at the association meeting. I don't know what the association vote was. I can assume by the fact that there's a signature that the vote was an acceptable one, but there's some assumptions in there. Um, it's a beautiful house. Great. I would like it to be done in a noticed meeting. If I may, Madam Chair? Yes. I think a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week, I gave the uh, commissioners the uh, bylaws for the association, and it addressed that issue in there, I believe. Oh. Oh, who says? <laughs> okay. And so, what did it say? Can I ask? It say? It, I believe it said what I just indicated. And that was that once the association approves it, it's a formality for the selectmen. The, by the bylaws would say that? That it's a formality? Uh, and if it's a formality, it doesn't need my signature. I don't know, Joe. I'm not sure it's going to say it's a formality. Could we look at... It's an important question, and we should make sure we're doing it right. Hang on, Commissioner Platch. I can get you the bylaws. Commissioner Tassari thinks we're doing it wrong. I I, I'm not saying we're doing it yeah. wrong. I'm saying it makes me, as a commissioner, uncomfortable. I don't have as much time on as Excuse the chair. Excuse me, you're not acting as a commissioner. You're not acting as a commissioner, no. I take my duties as a selectman to be the same as my duties as a commissioner, to ensure that public decorum is, is upheld. Call me a stickler. I, 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 I would tend to agree with you if it hadn't already had a public meeting with the people that are that are in Hales and was approved. So. Could I make a request? You may. That when these are going to be coming to us, we notice. And if we just issue a notice that we're going to have to oh, we'll just go back and put, put it on the agenda. We'll put it on, we'll just have put Hales back on the agenda every week. Let's That's do all. it. That would be if my there's going to be a building matter. permit, put that on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Just let us know. Would we have to issue it a day in advance? Yeah, but we don't always know. As long as we have Hales on there. If Melissa can do that. I Might I offer that I have some communication with Hales, the treasurer? prior to your meetings that I can yeah. put the specific items on the agenda in case there's an interest for yeah. people to attend. So do you rather get, than just have a running open thing? Do you get these more than a day in advance? No, or not usually. Could we arrange that maybe? I don't understand why they can't be told if it's not here by this time, it's in the next meeting. Yeah, and we'll just do it every week. If I may, I think what's happened is I think Hales perhaps has made it too easy for him to do this because the feeling is it's um, quote unquote a formality. I understand the selectman's concern with it, but all we're trying to do is help the uh, applicant get their building permit in a timely fashion so they can proceed with their construction. 
when are they scheduled to be in? Do you know? They've already started construction. Oh, well, then it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> yes, we've got the cart before the horse here, unfortunately. <laughs> It does. Look, you've said just said it's a formality. Earlier you said it's an informality. <laughs> well, I apologize. It's, it is a formality. It, okay. If they've already started construction, what's the harm in holding this for one more week? Just don't. They've already started construction. <laughs> there will be no harm. I, I think in order to do it correctly, the building permit should be approved, put on site prior to construction. It's too late for that. And we've got to get them into that format. Now, what happens, like I said, perhaps what Hales needs to do is issue a statement to the association that all building permits have to have at least one week notice or some such thing. Rather than just walking in and handing us the I mean, approval. If we get them on Monday, we can put them on the agenda for Wednesday, can't we? Well, if we I get them on Monday. 24 hours notice, right? If we get them on Monday. See, what happens is somebody will walk in at the last minute and hand it to Denise. And then it will be Denise on the following, following week. Okay. Then it gets on the following week. Can I offer one more thing? That's up to the chair. Maybe we could tighten, Madam Chair. Yes. Maybe we could tighten it up just a little more so that Hales is scheduled for the first and third Wednesday of each month so people can predict that, they can know it, and we can get in more of a good process. I don't... Just my opinion, I don't feel like these things couldn't be done on, on that schedule. I just say we put it back on there like we had it, hails every week, and every if there's week. no business, then we just skip over it, and if we have business, it's open, it will cover whatever business we need to do. That would be my preference, Madam okay. Chair, yep. if solicited. Then we're covered. Okay. I like that idea. Thank you. Yeah. So the question is, is it okay for me to sign this today or you want me to wait till next week to sign this? Just a formality. <laughs> Since construction's already started and they're out of compliance without the building permits, I would be in hopes that you'd consider signing it for today. It would be up to these two. Yeah. So, Given that we're going to do this every week from now on, and they will start following it, and they'll get the word, I, I, I don't have a problem signing it today. Then I will await a motion. For me? Yes. So moved. <laughs> I'll have to wait for a second. That's up to you. You don't have to second it. I'm happy seconding it, but I'm not. I'm not signing it. But I would think you only need two. I think we only need one. Great. So seconded. <laughs> For the purposes of discussion. <laughs> and to allow the chair to sign. Yes. Okay. Yes. And to allow the chair to sign. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Slightly. <laughs> Thank sure you. The thanks you too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, we don't want to move any more. Well, We're well, not. They've already started. And we do want to protect everyone's rights. Well, I think what's happened is I think for so long it's been so easy. It's just been loosey goosey, yes. And it's a pretty you. small community and everyone gets along. So with, until our, they don't. with our new town <laughs> they clerk don't. with our new town clerk there, we have found a lot of things that have not been done in the past that should have been done. Like this. Yeah. We've never done these before. Yeah. We've never done a lot of things. So you know, live for your guy. Yes. Right? Okay, now on to county. Um, it's my understanding that the commissioners have the financials from the uh, fiscal department, the recent ones. Yeah. So I've been telling you for three or four months now that what I want to do is I want to give you a printout which shows the amount used to date, the percentages, and what's left. And so I have that here for expenses, copy for each. And I also have that here for revenue, copy of each. Oh, this is a different format than what we got? It's a different format, and I think it's an easier format to read and understand. We have four copies of this. I'm sorry, maybe one too many. There's one that says original. Oh. Which one says original? Oh, maybe, uh, no, yeah, I'm sorry, I gave you one too many. Here, I could write original on you this on and give it back to you. <laughs> That's that. Good idea. They're all the same, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Original means it's my copy. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I'm... 
indicating that I think this format is much easier to read. You can look at any specific item and see what's been used year to date, um, what's available, what the balance is, what was used in the current month. Now this does take a little bit of extra work to do it this way and with the assistance of people both in the finance office and in the with Melissa's assistance, we're able to produce this. And I think this gives you a much better information than the actual report you get out of the finance office. So this is? Uh, this is through April. Okay, so this is just through April, well, first quarter. Oh, no. Okay. key thing you want to look at is um, the percentages spent on the budget and the revenue the percentages received. And we're January, February, March, April, we're four months into the year, so wow. shouldn't be much more than 25% uh, if I figured that correctly. Well, I'm looking at the uh, office supplies. We're already 50, 51%. Yep. So I'm wondering Fortunately, what... that's a small number. So I don't get too excited over it. Well, but I do, because I want to know what, they're, what they've already spent $3,500 on. Wow. Office supplies, 0 yep. through 6. Yeah. Or yeah, through December yep. of 2020, this year they've spent 1359 Yep. Where do you get that? Yeah, am I looking at the, I don't think I'm looking at what everyone else is looking at. Are you looking at the budget? First page. That's what I'm it looking seems at to indicate. If you go down on the first column under 4100.036 office supplies. Yeah, so it says 3500 was budgeted. In 2000, that's 2020. No, only 500, 500 was budgeted. Okay, 500 was budgeted, but only $255 was spent. So where are we getting that we spent thousands of dollars on office supplies when there's only 500 even in the well, line? I want to know why do we budget okay, only 500? Sorry, Madam Chair. I just was not <laughs> on I'm the looking at this. I'm like, how come we had 3500 in the 20 budget, I thought but I now we only got 500 yeah, I know. Why okay. Did, why did the delegation do that to us? So the trick is, look at the... The we put some on each Most of it's in finance now because we split oh. finance in the commissioner's office. So the $500 is just for the commissioners and myself for the year. Super. Okay. Well, we need more. So okay. what we're showing you is we're showing the 20, yep. 20 budget, the revised budget, and what was actually spent through December 31st, 2020. The 2021 budget, any revision through April 30th of what has been spent and the percentage and what the balance in that category is. That's on the budget sheet. Okay. On the revenue sheet, we're showing 19, 20, 20 actual, and 21 budget. And then you're showing through April 30th what's been received and what percentage and what the balance is to be received. Okay, hold on this just a moment. This is pretty useful. I, I like this. I'm sorry. It's okay. Representative Avlini, you have a question for us or a comment? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can my delegation get a copy of that as well? Yes. Um, yep. Yeah. Sure. We think it's a public okay. document. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like the sheriff's department is right on track with their budget. I would expect nothing else. Right. And that's <laughs> the beauty of using this format. You can see who's right on budget and who may be a little off their budget. I like this one. This is, this is better. Yeah. It's an improvement. And then we have the revenue side here. Are we doing okay? I'm sensing Commissioner Tassari is not pleased with this. No, she's not a numbers person. Oh, okay. I, I'd rather we worry about it when they get close to their line item. And I am concerned about the fact that we pay a lot of money for a finance system that doesn't give us a printout like this. And now we're asking the finance department to yeah. again do that work and to incorporate it's not Melissa's the finance work. Department, if I may. You said 
I Correct me that. if I'm wrong. You just said with the help of the finance department and Ms. Siemens, this is made possible. That would mean the finance department and Ms. Siemens have to do work on this when we pay a lot of money for a software system to do our accounting. I'm, it's very nice, Joe. Very I'm not trying to take away from that. Yep. My concern is when we have already overburdened personnel, duplicating efforts to get a very useful table is great, but it is a duplication of efforts for an already overworked department that is missing a department head. That is my concern. I'm also, to be fair, not a numbers person. When the lines get a lot closer to jeopardy, I'll worry about it. I have the utmost faith in the department heads that they're looking at these numbers and that they will let me know if there's an issue. Until then, I'm not a numbers person, so I, but thank you for preparing this. So if I can clarify my previous statement, what I get from the finance department is the report that you get. That's all I get from the finance department. With Melissa's assistance, this is how this document is prepared. It's not the finance department that does anything other than provide the information that you already have, which doesn't seem to be adequate to give the answers to the questions. I if I may say, I thought, and it's nice, Joe, I, 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 I agree, it is nice. but I thought when we had our, our presentation with Avenue that there was something there where you could just put this into this format with a click of a button, kind of, sort of. Just like that. But, but I, I since we're not up and running in that part of Avenue yet. Yes, yes. Saying yes. yes. But, but it has the, confirms that then. It has the potential to do that, so then that would be. Well, once that happens, then yep. we can do that. Yep. But this has been so. a process that we've been looking for for the last three yep. years so. to try and get this format. Okay. And now that we've got it, I hope the commissioners will use it. If you don't want us to do it, we won't nope. do it. But. No, I'm Madam Chair, may I say yes. something? I like this format. And now I'm hearing that we could do this in Avenue? I'm yes. pretty sure. But I wanted to say, I still should keep Joe around. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> I want this format. <laughs> right. okay. But why are we using Avenue? I'm sorry, it's not your fault. I'm just. Let's use we Avenue. We will remedy to do this. that let's, soon. Let's remedy it. Yes. Okay. And then, you know, I know Joe is busy, and and then department heads would be wouldn't have to wait for this. They could just, you know, with a press of a button, like just get it. They know exactly where they are all the time. That would be terrific. Okay. Joe. Yep. Uh, the chairman has his hand up, and then I see the chair's here. Did you want to sign this so we can get copies so we can? Yep. Get it. Oh. It doesn't require a vote. We've already done it. Yep. It's the, just the formality of signatures. But then I could have Miss Siemens make some copies. Okay. This is much better. And if we can get this with Evan, it'll save you a lot of time. Yep. Yeah, save department heads time. Would you sign up, please? We've already um, voted on it. I don't need to look at it. Right no, no, we, <laughs> we, we beat it to a dead horse. Oh, good. I like this. Uh, Whatever the saying is. Okay, horse. I'm sorry. Uh, Representative <laughs> Pavelani, you have another question for us? Or a statement? Yes. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and members of the Commission, again. Um, I think you seems to have been a problem through the years. Uh, I know a number of years ago we looked at going to a different system that, that was put on the back burner. Um, given the fact that we have a new commission, a new delegation, and a new finance chair, finance, uh, excuse me, a new finance person starting soon, uh, it might be the time to re reignite that conversation about getting a new system that's more user friendly than Avenue. Okay. Thank you. And I think. Um that later on we can talk to Bonnie about that also because I have discussed that with her about our system. So uh, she might have some information for us on that too. Um, representative. Okay. Yep. Okay, under the Treasurer's Report, the 2020 Financial Audit Update, um, the auditor is here working diligently. Uh, we met with her on uh, Monday. Uh, with the entire department heads uh, to go through make sure everybody was on the same page. Um, I think we'll be pretty close to having the audit completed. However, there may be a little bit of a delay, but that's par for the course. 
Um, things are progressing and moving forward, so we're very happy with that. Uh, the April expense and revenue report, you just got it, so that's done. Um, Deputy Treasurer compensation. Seems to be a uh, bit of an issue in compensating our Deputy Treasurer uh, when they fill in. The concern seems to be that they're already on the payroll and are therefore not entitled to the $15 stipend. However, the RSA indicates nothing about that other than the fact that the deputy treasurer shall be paid $15 for each day they are engaged in the official duties hereunder, and compensation shall be paid by the county. Um, it's come to my attention that I guess there's been some discussion with the auditor that thinks perhaps that's not the way it should be handled. However, I think the commissioners voted to go ahead and pay the deputy treasurer the $15. Did? I think you did. I'm not sure. We did. No, we definitely did. We did. Yeah. That's definitely And I done. told our reiterated that to uh, the finance department, and they seem to be still be balking at it. So, so where do we sign? We don't. We already did. Oh. This is we paid her. No, we haven't paid her. Oh. Oh, we, we voted to pay her. We voted to pay her, but it has so not. not paying her? Why isn't she getting paid? Anyway. I'm sorry. Yes. Why does it say he when, when it's a... Well, it should say he, he slash she. Or they, whatever. I have signed the document and turned it into finance. Yep. And I will talk to Kathy again today. Okay. And I will also if we choose not to do this, then there are some other people who were paid. Yes, uh, I agree. The same way that they're going to have to return those funds. We chose yeah. them to do it. No, we will, yes. yeah, we're not. We're not we, relitigating we, this. We've, we've already done yeah. it. We agreed to pay her. The check should be issued, or we're going to have bigger problems. Well, then I'm going to say you're going to have bigger problems because the check hasn't been issued. The okay. Madam Chair said she would address it. Yep, I will address the it today. RSA again. Be the third time. I just, can, Madam Chair, may I say something? Of course. The RSA requires we pay yes. our deputy treasurer fifteen dollars a day. We're going to follow the RSA. Right. Okay, That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Done deal. It's been decided. <laughs> Somebody has got that message. On days when she works and fills in, it's fifteen dollars a day. Exactly. Yeah. Not a lot either. No. Nothing for the work she does. No. Yeah, nothing worth. Uh, I did okay. Time. Joe, you have anything else? I for think us? that's it for the financials. Okay, Thank good. You. And I see that the sheriff is here. Dominic, would you like to come on up? You have something for us? And in your packet, there's a uh, White Lake uh, police detail agreement. That's what he's here for. Good morning. So, yes. Um, this detail is a grant for White Lake State Park that they received. Um, it initially goes to Tamworth Police Department. Last year they reached out to us to help them because they could not cover the entire sum of time schedule that was needed. Again, they did this this year uh, earlier, so we have it in front of you. Um, so they are doing some days, but I think we're doing the majority of the days. Um, if you go ahead and sign this or agree to it. Um, there is an authorization form if you wish to um, complete that and then I would be able to sign the entire document on behalf. Okay. That's Was that part of it? The yes. Yep. Is that this page here? The one with your yeah. signature name on it? And that gives yes. you time to... Take care Madam Chair, why don't you take my packet because it's it's a standalone page in my packet. That way you could sure. sign okay. it and give it to the sheriff. Oh. It's on the back side in yours, yep. so you'd have you'd lose a page of oh. yours. Okay. Yes. Uh, this agreement, the letter you're doing the agreement is pretty standard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And again, we worked this detail last year. It hasn't changed in anything. No problem. Do you need a motion? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve this. Speaking very softly. Louder. I'd like to make a motion to approve this and, and authorize our chair to, our chairperson to sign. I second Commissioner Platch's motion to approve the White Lake detail conference, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, detailed slip, along with the approval for Madam Chair to sign. 
the approval for the sheriff to then go ahead and sign as the appropriate portion on the contract. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, I'm signing this and you're right back to you, Donald. Is that okay? Yes. Do you need to have a witness on that? Yeah, it's a note of your justice. Do we have someone? Are you able? No, not yet. When, um, I am. Bob, Bob is. Bob is. Uh, well, there we go. Now I know who to call. Could you bring your, your seal? <laughs> justice of the peace does not need. Don't, yeah. Oh. Signature alone is good enough. Wow. Oh. Well, that's I'm good for me. That so you can marry people, too. I just let mine lapse. I did mine, too, because now that I'm not working somewhere that pays yeah. for it. <laughs> I let mine lapse, too. <laughs> me, too. I still give people call and want to know if I can marry them. How many? When, when you get a pretty good track record, all of them are stuck. All of them? Thank you. That's it. That is pretty good. Dominic, do you have anything else for us? No, I think that's it. Uh, we have a deputy starting next week. Ah. A new deputy. Okay. <coughs> Not today, Bob. You guys pay the bill this week. Just sign the check. So what do I have to, what? On this day. Oh, I don't do this. He does it, right? Yeah. He does Someone that. Someone needs to do it, right? Okay. On this day. What's today's date? Is that the ninth? Is it the ninth? Yes. 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 Maybe you need to print your name there. In here? Yeah, your name, your name is there, so it should be his name. That gets printed there. Bob's. Oh. oh. Are you sure? Yeah. Hang on. I know, that's what I thought, but I, it's very confusing. And I already oh, yeah. typed in the chairperson. You already did? I already typed in the you chairperson. You typed in your name. Oh, okay. So it's Bob's name. Gonna, I know, I know, but I already put my a T here, so I'll just turn that into a B. Fix it into a B. Yes. Yeah, we have a do-over sheet. He's already okay. He's gonna have to come back up and sign again. Can I have my packet back? <laughs> so I can file it accordingly. <laughs> So the new deputy will be, f he's full certified. Uh, he's working about three or four years in the state, so. Good. That was a good. Always helpful. Is it local or is it from? Uh, from Tilton PD. Oh, Tilton. Okay. Everything else is going fine in your department? Yeah. We hired a dispatcher, so we have one opening for one vacancy that left. And, um. We still have a deputy opening for the deputy that retired. Any applicants for that? Yes, we do have okay. one um, that we're reviewing the background. Okay. And Sheriff, we owe you a letter. So there it is. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Wilson, can okay. you scan this oh, one in and get it to the... Okay. Thing? Okay. okay. Um, Bob, Linen Service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In your packets, you should have a contract extension for general linen service for the nursing home. Mm -hmm. I would like to preface my request for the commissioners to, um, to sign this. Um, I feel compelled to defend my position of asking the commissioners to waive the uh, bid requirement for this. This is a $633 a week, $32,000 a year contract. Um, when I make requests like this to the commissioners, uh, I do not take these requests lightly. I take these requests based on the fact that um, they have gone through the process. They have gone through the, uh, these vendors have gone through the bid process. They have won the bid according to uh, the bid practices. And if there are any change in terms beyond the scope of the contract from year to year, uh, that's a whole other story. But when 
The contract is presented at the same price for the same terms when they've won the bid under the competitive bid process and we have established um, a good relationship with this vendor. Um, I think it is in the county's and the taxpayers' best interests to extend the contract as long as the terms and everything do not change. Then and only then uh, do I typically make the requests to the commissioners to waive the bid process, which I am today. Did we do this last we, we, had, we have done this for the last four years as long as I have had, um, uh, as long as this has been under my umbrella. And the company has done exactly that. They've held the price, they've held the terms, and uh, they've, they've done a good job for us. We've established a good relationship. Uh, anytime we need anything out of the ordinary, they're always on uh, Johnny on the spot. Um, going and seeking out another company, the fact that there really aren't other companies locally that can do the same thing that General Linen does, um, I think it's in the county's and the taxpayers' best interests to continue this contract mm -hmm. and request that the commissioners waive the process and sign this contract. Commissioner Fletch, any questions or comments? Is this a rental contract? What is this? It's essentially yes, because it's linens. We don't own the linens. They come in twice a week and exchange dirty for clean. Are we paying for the service? Or? We're paying for the service. So and, it's really a service and, 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 and a service contract, yes. It's really a service contract. It's a service contract. We don't own, we don't own these linens. We're paying for the service. We're paying for the service. Correct. And really, the service is their cleaning them. Correct. We don't have to bid it. Then we don't have to waive anything. Oh. Under the RSA, we don't have to waive the bid process uh, because it's a service contract. Commissioner Tesari, you have any questions or comments? Um, just one, uh, Bob. When was the last time this went out to bid? Did it go out to bid last year, or did we renew it? Last no, it was it was at least four years ago, and it was before I took over. Howie was the last one to do it. It wasn't long before I took over, but uh, when when I was handed the contract in uh, 2017, I've been able to maintain price and terms since. Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Price has not gone up. Nope. Which I find everything else is going up. No issues None. with the quality of the linens. None. And if there if there are quality issues, we present them to them immediately, and they always address them. Okay. You know, sometimes uh, sheets get threadbare, that type of thing. Uh, they always address it. Extra pleasure. My pleasure would be to approve the extension. Is that a motion? Your opinion first. Oh, I agree. Do you have yeah, Do you? Okay. to extend. All right, then I will await a motion. I would uh, like to make a motion to approve the extension of the general linen services contract. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Could I make another comment? I'd like yeah. for the benefit of the public. Yep. This is a 30 day cancellation clause. I mean, this could be canceled on 30 days' notice. Yeah, I, 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 I did work all these. Yeah. Those, those points in the contract. If any problems arise, we have an out. Yeah. So. And you have one that you need signed? Any Anyone will do. Oh, okay. Oh, that's my copy. I'll take that back and okay. make sure Just Melissa has a copy. Signature. Thank you. Where do we sign? Last page. Last page. I think. Well, for, it might be first page. Looks like there's possible signature spot on both the first and last. Authorized customer signature, um, customer print name. Would you, would we like to make a motion to allow Bob to sign this contract? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to allow Bob to sign the contract. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Madam Chair, what's the amount of the contract? $633 per week. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Tom, you have nothing else for us. That's it. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have something at 10.30? We do. We have to go down. Okay. Right here. You're right on time. Sure. Yeah. Hey, I like to stay on time. Do we need to... Yeah. How are we doing that? Um, I guess... Are we... We need to... Uh, recess or a recess? A recess. Yeah. Are we going into town public? It's, it's a, a non-meeting. A okay. non-meeting. Then we'll recess. Yeah. Motion. Oh, you, you need a, you yeah. don't need a motion to recess. No. You can just do that. Yes. Um, at this point, we are going to recess for probably a half hour um, to go into a non-meeting with legal counsel, and it is uh, 10.25. You are unmuted. Okay. It is 11.30. Is that close enough? 11.32. It is 11.32, and we are coming out of recess and going back into our normal business meeting. Um, next on the agenda is uh, the coordinator's report. Melissa? So sorry. Just one second. That's okay. You have on the That's annual right. report and the municipal records committee slash record retention. Um, nothing new to report on the annual report. Um, okay. Just waiting for a couple of items on that, and um, I just want to keep it on there so we don't lose sight of it. On the municipal records committee, uh, have one second. Let me just get my papers back in order here. Um, there was a question. Uh, we're starting to, to put together the municipal records committee for the commissioner's approval, and you know, kind of outline a process of what that committee's work would look like for your approval. One of the questions that came up is that years ago there was an order from the uh, Carroll County Superior Court that the county shall not destroy, remove, or otherwise dispose of any minutes or other records. Um, and that was ordered in January of 2014. Um, and I have a copy of that preliminary order for you. Um, if you notice the last paragraph of the order, it says that it's a prelim preliminary basis pending final hearing. The final order was issued in the fall of 2015, but there was nothing in the file saying that along with that issuance of the final order that this also goes away um, and frees up our ability to dispose of old county records. I called the uh, clerk of the court and she was doing some research but she also um, would have to get an opinion from the judge who's now retired. Do you have a copy of the final order? Um, Yes, downstairs. There's a copy of the. And it doesn't say. Anything it doesn't mention that? anything about this preliminary order. So. Well, but aren't these ones that are issued routinely in every case? I know. It's a preliminary order. Yeah. I'm leaving it to you guys because. It would be superseded by the time. Okay. Yeah. The clerk uh, said you do have the option to file a motion for clarification if you wish. Um, I, I just don't know do we have how to proceed. We would keep records normally, wouldn't we? But only for, I think it's seven years, six years? Is that the RSA requirement? It depends on the record retention yeah. list, which I have one copy of that here. You know, it lists by department how long you have to keep things. Um, some are only one year, some are um, seven years, some are 20. And where is this case now? Who's this guy? <laughs> Who is this choker? <laughs> Where is this case now, Mr. Cole? Has this been resolved? The case has been settled, yes. Okay. And is, does the settlement say anything about... No. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we follow the RSA? I'm not... I, I don't feel a burning need to start burning records or anything, but... Right. You know, why don't we follow the RSA um, about okay. records retention? I'm sure citizens would approve of that. 
Madam Chair, may I give a little background on this issue? Yes, you may. We were Thank hoping you. you would do so. Thank you. The case is adjudicated, but if you review the case, uh, one of the complaints was missing minutes. So the reason why the injunction was put in, uh, sorry, the cease and desist, was because the commissioners at the time, while the meeting minutes were missing, uh, were going to call in a shredding company and start shredding documents when there were many, oh, okay. there, were, there were many minutes missing. Have they all been found? I don't have any confirmation, but I only focused on 2013, I believe it was, it was just one year, because we found if we expanded it, it would have been a huge opening. So, so um, are, we, are we talking public meeting minutes or, or non-public? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's the background of the okay. reason why there was a cease and desist. Because while I was trying to find minutes, the then commissioners were trying to shred documents. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. What, I'd like to ask you a question. We're not sending minutes for shredding, are we? We're not doing that, are we? I mean, not to my knowledge. So I don't think anything's been shredded have any since I've been here. I mean, you're, you weren't even on the board. No. This time, yeah. It looks like the board members, and maybe you could confirm this, Ed, were David Babson, Asher Kenny, and David Sorensen. Asher Kenny was not listed on the, uh, it was the two other commissioners. Okay. She's listed on this she, as a she defendant. Really, oh, she, she was, was on that, and then there's, uh, she was removed from it. Okay. Asher Kenny got removed. Okay. So... David Babson, I don't believe, is here anymore. Or Sadly David not. Or David mm -hmm. Sorensen. No. So, we're going to follow the RSA. We will not be destroying minutes that are not supposed to be destroyed. I, when, you know, we have boxes of documents that have nothing to do with minutes. Yep. And we're going to, you know, Departments can send things to the shredders and when they're no longer needed. Okay. But, uh, Just thought that should be clarified first before I continue yeah, on. With before we can. I, I do not want to spend money committee. going to the court and asking for a declare, you know, some kind of clarification. I don't want to get involved in that. I, I just, if the case is over, the case is over, and we'll follow the RSA. This was a preliminary order, and it looks pretty standard. Would you have objected to that, Mr. Como, since it was you who brought the original suit? I'm sorry, I have no comment on that. Okay. That's All right. Fine. He doesn't. Need to we will go to other business. The UNH Cooperative Extension. Um, I believe that Olivia will be here next week. Okay. She's on vacation this week, um, and I'd like to get this settled so that. It, they can start using it. So, um, Will and um, Olivia, if you can talk to Will. Um, the Blueberry MOU, I guess I wasn't here. What Did we do a new one? What was that? I wasn't here with that. Or is it just an update? Or There was discussion about possibly updating it due to the addition of the new laser equipment and the pick your own, and I don't know if that's settled, if I should take it off the agenda, if we're still having that conversation. I, I thought we were waiting, if I may, I thought we were waiting for some further input from them about the shed they wanted to build. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. They need so, a quote. Who was yeah. getting the price on that? Dale or Bob? Yeah, Dale or Bob. <laughs> oh, Will. I mean, not our Bob. No, not our, we, they were going to bring us a proposal. Okay. Okay. That's what they I'll were going to consider. Him. Yeah, I'll call him. Well, actually, if he's there, to, if you're, if he's, if Dale is there today at five, mm -hmm. and you happen to be there, you can ask him. Or if I happen I to be there, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So where are we on the nepotism policy? Is that something we? Uh, Commissioner Tassari sent out draft proposal language, I'm yep. waiting for feedback from. I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine too. Okay. So I can put that in the 
the policy format and present it next week for a okay. vote and a signature. Okay, yes. sounds good. And we want to do the same thing with a competitive bid policy? Um, yes, I have, um, uh, unless you've already decided what you'd like to do with that, I have Commissioner Tassari's um, proposed language for the protest clause attached to the copy of the current policy. I can just add it as a, as a paragraph. I have a third one too. Mm -hmm. I don't need them. Okay. okay, you don't need them. Okay. So I, I think it was fine. I'm in agreement. I think, if I might, I think there was some discussion about the process for doing that. Yeah, Commissioner right, Platt should appeal to. Commissioner Platt should not like my wording. You never like anything. You never like anything. Is that what you said? I think so. <laughs> Um, what did you have a problem with, Commissioner Flash? Right here. Okay. Um, can we, who makes the final determination? That was the issue you had last time. I don't know. What did I write? We'd hear said protest. Yeah, we would hear that, and we would. Mm -hmm. So the commissioners. Commissioner's, commissioners. De decision will be final and right. binding. And I don't want to create a right to go to court. It but, doesn't. But don't they already have right. that right? Yes. No, I don't think so. They could. What statute would they have that right? Any civil statute? It's civil law. I have no idea, but you can sue anyone for anything. That's a well-settled principle. Whether you prevail is another story, but the county would still have to defend. Ed sued us. It's right here. What did he sue under? Whatever this statute is. I'd refer you to any and all listed in any other suit the county's ever been sued for. And I don't understand the question. I don't want to create an additional pathway. Other than the one that already exists, yeah. okay. So the decisioners of the commission, the decision of the commissioners shall be final and binding. Yeah. Okay. We can. What does it say, Madam Chair? Upon the parties. Maybe add that language. So it says, should a further hearing be requested by the protester, the Board of Commissioners shall hear said protest and their decision shall be binding, final and binding? Yeah. Upon the parties. Madam Chair, if you could pause just for a minute. We had an internet issue. Okay. And Zoom is reconnecting, and when it reconnects, you'll be muted. I just need to fix that. Okay. Be better broadband. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gary, can you read me what I wrote? After protest, mm -hmm. you put a comma, and the board of, and the board's decision shall be final and binding upon the parties. Everything else looks good? I think so. It's just a, you know, that small paragraph is the only change, correct? Okay. Um, so I sent so that back to my 
to Melissa and have it ready for us team. to sign next week. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. Then Thank you for that. Yes. Commissioner Kassari. Welcome. <coughs> Um, public records me. request policy, right to know, we wanted to, um, I did not, I'm sorry, I didn't put a copy in your packet. Okay. Um, looking for some guidance about why we're looking at the policy, I guess. I think um, it was requested by a member of the public that you look at the policy. Yeah. Well, I, mm, kind of, sort of, but okay. I, yes, I want to review our policy and make sure that we're following it. Okay. So if you could have that for us next week? Sure. Yep. Let's see if we can improve on it. I want to check it with the RSA and make sure that mm -hmm. everything's where it should be. Okay? Okay. Yep. Which leads me to, um, do we have any updates on any of the 91As that we've been working on that are near completion by any chance? So the only outstanding... I have two outstanding 91A requests, I believe. One of them is for copies of a contract, which I just spoke to the IT contractor, and he was able to locate the missing one. So I have that. I can fulfill that request. And then I emailed um, Mr. Camo and asked for the letter that the commissioners agreed to, of needing clarification on his request for um, email data. And I'm waiting on clarification from him to proceed. Okay. That's where we're at. Thank you. Yep. And what's the first one on? Did we see a copy of that? Anyone any request? Um, it's on, no, it's on my desk. Okay. It came, it, it actually came from, uh, through HR from a provider of um, LexisNexis. They provide subscription services to law libraries. And they asked for a, co a copy of any agreements we have with any companies who provide that service. So we have one with Thomson Reuters for the jail and for the county attorney's office. And I now have both of those and I can send them on. Who made that request? Uh, Lexus, Nexus. Made the request? Yes. A, a competitor? Sure. Yeah. And I know that uh, the sheriff is working on the one that he had he said it's going to take a while because they're asking for 20 years of information. <laughs> yeah. And he did let them know that he's working yeah. on it, so we're, we're compliant okay. so far. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's that. Any commissioners, comments, reports? I think I've already told you guys everything that I know. Shouldn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. Okay. Matthew. I don't really have any reports. Okay. Kim? Um, I, I'm seeking clarification, Madam Chair, on what what's my outstanding obligation in the annual report? What am I supposed to be working on? Would you like me to assist you with writing the 2020 Commissioner's Report? Sure, that'd be lovely. Thank okay. You. <laughs> we'll work on that. Great. Okay. <laughs> Seems as though I wasn't here in 2020, I will come up with something riveting, so, I'm sure. I have it, no doubt. None of, the, none of the 2020 commissioners wanted to participate in No, I asked. They declined that. to participate. Yeah. Okay. I asked um, Amanda. She said no. Well, I know. I think we're ready to okay. have a dedication, too. And and, yeah. and a dedication to be we'll handled in non-public. If you choose to dedicate it to someone this We year. do. We're ready, we do. and I can fill you in on that. Okay. So. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, any media questions? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Register of Dees, do you have something for us? I'm wondering what your thoughts are concerning the contract with Cofile for the repair and restoration. I've been working on it. It's been reviewed by multiple parties, including Primex, our insurer, and uh, had a long discussion with uh, our attorney, Marbury, um, okay. this morning, for, and he's doing the last um, fine-tuning of it, and mm -hmm. uh, I wondered if I could send it off, not sign it, and let them review it before, as soon as I get it back from uh, Attorney Marbury, mm -hmm. um, and see if they sign it as is. When, do you, when will you have that back today? Yes. Um, uh, do you think 
before three o'clock? I to put pressure on them. Well, but we wouldn't be signing it yet. Right. She's I, just sending it to them. I would be sending it to them for review to see okay. if they have any. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. We have changed it quite a bit in our but interest. If we still want to make some, some comments, I, I'd, I'd like to go through it again myself. Before I send it off? Not necessarily. As long as they know it's still subject to, to change on our side. Uh, I'll wait then. Okay. Um, or if I, if we can do it before three o'clock, I could spend a half hour with it before then. Or you can let me know if yeah. if it's okay, and yeah. and when you do, then I'll send it. Yeah, I, I'd like to get it to them as soon as possible, though. So yeah. I don't want to delay this. Um, would would tomorrow morning be good enough? Sure. I can go through it tonight again. Sure. Yeah. yeah. If that's okay. It's okay with me. With my colleagues. That's why we just just to yeah. get your approval. I don't want to send it off without right. your knowledge unless you're okay. We, we paid an attorney to look yes. at this contract, yes. so I'm going to defer to the contract yeah. attorney. Yeah, um, it's been so. so I don't need. I, I don't need to see it. Multiple attorneys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll pass it on to you then, and um, okay, you're okay with me passing it on for signature to Colfile after that. Yes. Yes, for me. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Lisa, keep you waiting. That's all right. This is on the agenda. Joe, you look puzzled. Is there something that you have a question on? No, no. I'm just oh. contemplating. Waiting. <laughs> you are waiting? Okay. Do we have any do we have any media questions? Yes, Nothing on the chat. Okay. Pardon? I, you do? You're the media today? You're usually the public. I'm everything. What do you want me to be? It's whatever you want to be at. I'm just Go making ahead. a note that usually you wait for public. I just have three comments. I have a suggestion first, is that whenever you have a delegation meeting, you know, coming up within 72 hours, I would recess your meeting just in case. So if you're in that meeting or the delegation has needs you to do something, then you will still have that meeting posting open so you can you could feasibly conduct business. It's just an idea. Because in the past, I've noticed that okay. you would recess and, I'm sorry, you would adjourn and then you're like, oh, we have to we didn't post this other meeting. So, so if it's within 72 okay. hours, it might be a good idea just to recess. Supply chain security. I noticed that your IT guy goes out and buys items and he uses HP and he's fully aware of what supply chain security is. Yeah. I just don't know if you have a, um, a campus-wide policy on that. Like if a, a department head at the nursing home goes and gets uh, an electronic device that's not secure because you don't know where it was manufactured and it doesn't follow, that company doesn't specifically follow a, a security for their um, supply chain, then you shouldn't purchase it. Like the sheriff knows that with sensitive stuff that he has, he has to make sure that supply chain is followed. And I don't know if you have an internal policy. My last comment would be your, the hiring process for the sheriff. Okay. It's officially I've noticed in towns, town, right? they leave it up to the department head to provide a background check and whatever is needed. And sometimes the selectmen are kept out of the loop on that because they rely primarily only on the department head. I think, in my opinion, law enforcement should be under a different scrutiny. I think that any investigation on any hiring of any law enforcement officer should be shared with you, including lawyer list possibilities, any complaints, public complaints, or you know, uh, any background check information. Because I will also say publicly, and we all know this, that when a law enforcement officer, and I will use the word misbehaves or, or does things, misbehaves, basically they are moved to another town. And I think we need to stop that from occurring because it's negatively affecting, affecting good law enforcement officers and allowing the other ones to just go somewhere else. And I don't know if you actually get to see all that background information. Mm -hmm. No, we do not. So, thank you. Madam Chair, we wouldn't be entitled to that. The list is maintained and kept by an office separate from the sheriff in our division. It would, it would be up to that office to make a complaint if they felt that the sheriff was hiring someone on the list. Um, so there's, there's already formal processes. It's protected by another RSA because it's part of a person's personnel file. 
Um, so there's another RSA that strictly prohibits this disclosure of the Lori list. But there's constant talk that the Lori list may at some point become public. Stand by for that. Feel free to write your congressman about that. It's not public right now, so it's privileged information. There is a check on it, um, but if that check is not brought to our attention or the sheriff's attention, then th that's where it lies. But there is another entity tasked with maintaining and checking said qualifications. Two, actually. Can I have a follow-up? You may. So if that's true, isn't it also true that the, the commissioners have final say on hiring? I mean, that is under it's your purview. It's so. my understanding it's been litigated as to an elected official. I'm, I'm, I, I know what, how I feel about it, but I don't believe that's the consensus of the board. Well, I guess I make my point that the law needs to be changed. Yes, Thank you. there you go. You need to be a representative. Kid. Madam Chair? Yes. May I? Yes, you <laughs> may. Uh, I believe that elected officials who are running the, their departments can make hiring decisions within their budgets. They have to have the money to do it. As a courtesy, we, we do get informed. Uh, and those people do become county employees. So it is a gray area to some extent. Uh, so anything you can do in terms of harnessing support from elected officials to make, make appropriate changes in the law be helpful. If you know any elected officials. <laughs> police unions are very powerful. Yep, I know. We like our police. Any further uh, media questions? No, nope. see anybody. Um, seeing none, we will go to public input. Do we have any public input? Okay, seeing none. I will await a motion for non-public sessions. Would it be okay if Kim moved us in? Yes, Kim can move us in. Can I have my paper back? Yes. Actually, I think Melissa put them all on the bottom, but that's okay. I make a motion that we move into RS non-public under RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2, subsections A and C. Ooh, well, wait a minute. So none of these are going to happen until 1? Folks are at lunch now. Would mm -hmm. you like to take a lunch break? I could probably get your first one at 1230. Let's go to lunch. I know, but a half an hour isn't very long to go. Or you could go for the hour and we'll let them have their lunch time. Mm -hmm. It's up to you, obviously. So we'll go into recess then? Or? Okay. Okay. Yeah, go under recess. Okay. We will go into recess. It is 12 o'clock. We will recess until 1 o'clock. You're now in recess. Thank you. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we come out of recess and go into non-public under RSA 91A3, Roman numeral 2, subsection A and C. Oh, seconded. Okay. All those in favor, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Is that roll call? Not well, really, but. I'm trying to make a motion that we come out of recess, go out of non public into our regular public and seal all minutes of all non publics prior to this. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is. 320. And we are now going into our combined meeting. Goodbye. Goodbye. For the our first committee. Chair, are you going to recess your commissioner's meeting or are you going to continue? Well, okay, this is a joint meeting, so why don't we just continue? Okay. 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 Good. 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 And first of all, we have to apologize for keeping you all waiting. We had a another non-public scheduled and cut it very short so we could get up here so um, thank you very much for waiting and I see that we have Deirdre here yes. for the first time this is our new um, nursing home administrator welcome to Zoom so, okay. thank you. it's going well three days in I feel like a seasoned vet 
<laughs> okay. So I think we'll start off this uh, going over Bob Murray's list of priority list. I itemized it and tried to uh, justify it as best I could. I know that there's parameters that we need to fit into. Do you want me to, do you want me to read down the list? I sure do. Okay. Uh, because this, uh, this ARPA money, they're looking for green infrastructure improvements. Uh, uh, I figured a 2.5 2 megawatt solar array, which is about our annual usage, uh, would fit into that. Uh, our sewer system, uh, this ARPA money is clearly uh, dedicated to improvements for water and sewer systems. And uh, we have a 1978 vintage generator that feeds the sewer system. Currently, it's uh, not giving us any trouble, but it is, you know, 30, 40, 43 years old. Uh, I thought that this would be a good opportunity to, to bring that up to a newer generator, upgrade that. Uh, this building here, we have two rooftop units that are 2006, they're 15 years old and they're approaching uh, the end of their useful life, but uh, they are working. They didn't get changed in the Siemens project because uh, the load that was going to be put on them has been downgraded since the Siemens project. So we thought, I, I thought that we'd get a few more years out of them. And since they are ventilation improvements in a congregate setting, being the sheriff's office, the dispatch, the attorney's office, finance, and deeds, that uh, that, that would qualify. The annex offices and HVAC improvements uh, would benefit Mountain View because at Mountain View we have um, social distancing problems in some of the offices because we are doubled up in some of the offices. Uh, we have run out of space at, at Mountain View a long time ago, and uh, ventilation improvements at the annex would allow us some expansion room, as well as the um, administration offices. Uh, you know, you have people tripled up here, in, here in some offices. Quadrupled. Mm -hmm. <coughs> There's even dispatch. There's seven in one office. Yeah. And they still yeah. in a closet. It's not a closet. Uh, the air handlers at the Department of Correction, uh, they're 2001, they're as old as the jail is. Again, um, we, we maintain them, but they're old. Uh, the ventilation controls that are in concert with the HVAC equipment upgrades that we did here, uh, some of the underlying controls at the jail are just as old. And an outdoor 30 by 60 shade pavilion on the back side of Mountain View. The residents like to go outside, but on the back side of Mountain View, that's the southern exposure. And they absolutely roast out there in the sun. And there's limited shade. You can only fit at best a half a dozen residents and, uh, and, and staff combined on the shade that they have. So if we're going to promote um, social distancing and outdoor recreation, we need to have some kind of a shade structure on the back side of Mountain View. Well, were you able to get any prices on any of these projects? Yeah, the generator, I was able to, to get a budget estimate um, of $125,000. And I'm still working on um, the additional costs that we spent on cleaning supplies. I've been having difficulty getting the year-to-year -year data from our from our vendor. It's, it's been rolling in, but uh, I've, I need more time to go through the numbers. And the other the other items, no, I have not. Okay. I haven't had the time. Do we have any questions for Mr. Murray? Representative Thank, Luko? Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have a question. I would just say that, that these all sound like um, projects that, <clears throat> that that fit into this opera program. And uh, I guess we should move ahead with them, at, at, at whatever the, the, the process is, to whatever the procedure is to start moving ahead with them. Um, 
Um, Representative Carolina, you had your hand up. Uh, you can take Representative okay. Marsh. Okay, Representative Marsh. Y yes, my concern is that we may be spending money on things that we are not allowed to be spending this money on. And, and I would specifically call people's attention to the FAQ from the U.S. Treasury Department that was issued yesterday, and specifically FAQ 2.1, which clearly defines congregate living facilities. Uh, and there they define congregate living facilities as nursing homes, incarceration settings, homeless shelters, and group living facilities. Uh, and I think that some of these uh, locations don't fit that definition. Um, and uh, I. I uh, also, I think that the general infrastructure projects are clearly not allowed uh, by, under this program, and, and I question uh, whether question the eligibility of some of the items. Any other questions, Representative? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at first glance, um, the ventilation for all of these looks like it falls under. The pavilion, I couldn't see where it would tie in yet. Um, and the generator should be part of the full water system study and recommendations. I don't think we can just go ahead and replace that under this unless it's requested by the study. I think that the generator would fit under four, six. 4.6. Is that further? 4.6D specifically. To make necessary improvements in water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. Seems to fit in. I'm sorry, Bob, which one is that? 4.6D. What are you referring to? Yes, what are you referring to? Representative Cooper? Uh, I I'm not following where these reference numbers. It was the big thing we got last week. No, this this one here is the one that we got this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, we are not the frequent, using the frequently the same asked time. the frequently asked questions. I'll go grab them off the coffee that I printed. This is the actual. You know, little, yeah. So. Representative. Follow up. To, um, is the generator a recommended infrastructure to keep the water and sewer plant operating if the power goes out? You have to have, if the power goes out, you don't have a generator, you don't have water, you don't have sewer. Okay. I, I think that would, that would work, but make sure it's part of the water study. But that's one of the things to be replaced. Um, no. We've already, we could figure out how to do that, I guess, but what I was going to say is we already have what we're looking for on the water study out to bid right now, mm -hmm. and it's due tomorrow, I think. So adding in, I just think that would be another process, I think, is what I'm getting at. It's not going to be part of the one we have out to bid right now, I don't think, because I've been focusing mostly, the water has its own generator separate than the sewer. Um, so this study has been more on the water study, study, but we could do a study on sewer upgrades, which we would include that, I think, as well. Yes. So we're gonna, it's going to be two parts. There's going to be the retail aspect of it, which is the water, but then there's going to be the leftover, which is the sewer. So we're going to have a two-pronged approach to correcting those. That's what I think we should focus on. I, I think we should separate them on different things because I think there's going to be different demands possibly from, you know, with the water we're also supplying the village mm -hmm. versus the sewer we're just talking about what things are going to happen here on the complex. So I think splitting them into two would be a better idea. I asked is what I thought. And the sewer is just for this complex. There's no, we're not collecting sewer from any of the retail customers. Correct. Might be on the song, Bob. If you go to page 60 of the stuff that you already should have, mm -hmm. uh, the second paragraph, and I'll read it, section 602C1C and 603C1C of the Act provide recipients with broad latitude to use the fiscal recovery funds for the provision of government services. Government services can include, but are not limited to, maintenance or pay-to-go funded building of infrastructure, including roads, modernization of cybersecurity, including hardware, software, and protection of critical infrastructure, health services, environmental remediation, school or educational services, and the provision of police, fire, and other public safety services. I think protection of critical infrastructure, um, I could interpret that as to falling into that. 
That's not part of the new June eighth one, right? That's the old. You're looking at the old. One. This is the sixty. This is the. This is the big fat. The hundred and fifty page. Yeah. Hundred fifty one page. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. To clarify what Bob is saying, I, I guess I'm confused by the reference to 2.1 and the concern that if something is not a congregate living facility, are you saying that if it's not a congregate living facility, we can't spend money on it? Is, uh, that, is that what's being stated? Or? My, my concern is that if we spend money on a not allowed use, it ends up getting clawed back and cost the taxpayer. Of course, but are you saying that we can only spend money on congregate living facilities? If well, we're going to do infrastructure or, say, HVAC? I think HVAC and congregate living facilities is defined as a place where people actually live and not as an office building. I think that HVAC in a congregate living facility is exactly what you said. But are you saying we can't spend money on HVAC in a county building in a way that would improve the safety of workers in the building? for the safety of the public that visits the building? Is that what's being stated? Because I'm not, I, I didn't read that this way. I read this as something that's allowed. I read it as something, as a statement that would allow spending, not disallow spending in other ways. I'm unsure, and that's why I asked the Okay, question. okay. Yes, Representative? Thank you, Madam Chair. The last two sentences of 2.1 um, kind of spell out a little bit for um, physical plant improvements to public schools and health clinics or adaptations to public buildings to implement COVID-19 mitigation tactics. Um, replacing the air handless here would be part of the mitigation tactics for COVID-19 mm -hmm. in this public setting. I would think so. I, I would think that that would probably be an allowable use, seeing as we house the sheriff's office, our finance office, the registry of deeds, which is an essential business. The sheriff's is an essential business. County attorney is an essential business. And the, the function of county is an essential business. Um, I think that would, especially for this building, would be in order and something that I think everybody would not have an issue with, especially, you know, getting it up to uh, to the point where like, if you're in the building, you can expect, you know, fresh air or non-ionized air or whatever to kill mm -hmm. bacteria or whatnot, and it might help uh, mitigate the exposure over at the nursing home, too, if there is, I hate to say, cross-contamination, if something comes over or goes over, it might help with that as well. The last sentence. Capital investments in public facilities to meet pandemic operational needs are also eligible, mm -hmm. such as fiscal plant improvements, et cetera, et cetera, yep. including public buildings. Yep. Now, I would think that your fourth bullet fits within that. Mm. So, and as Representative Bucco observed, this is intended to have some, an expansive interpretation. I mean, we don't think this is, you know, if something's not specifically prohibited, we shouldn't assume it is. If it fits within another sentence of the guidance. But all that aside, I, I agree, we shouldn't do spend money on something that's not allowed. Correct. I fully agree with that. Um, I don't think anybody wants to. Raise I don't. A hand raise if yeah. anybody wants to spend money that's then going to come out of the taxpayers and we're all going to get whacked for it. No. Okay. Moving on. So, <laughs> uh, I don't think that we've used up all the money with this list. No. Are there no, other but we ideas? have Will's list, which is behind it. And I see the that. registrar has a project, and D is here, so I don't know if the nursing home has an additional project. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Representative. Thank you for um, just for time purposes. I, I think bullet points three, five, and six should be top of the list. The Shade Pavilion. I don't see it 
just yet. It might come up in another questionnaire. Um, but it's a great idea. I and the, the two, the diesel generators should definitely be part of the water and sewer study. Um, I think that's not going to be a big deal. The net metering solar array, you guys are on your own with that. Other than that, most of this should be an allowable expense, and I think you find support. Um, yes, you may. If solar were permitted under the guidance, which it seems to be, I don't, I don't know if anybody disagrees with me, but it seems to be like solar is everywhere, and I know there are a couple of towns that plan on using this money for solar. So if solar isn't in the guidance, a good facet of people are missing it, um, or miss that it wasn't in the guidance. Um, but if solar, if we were to entertain a project where solar was eventually going to pay for itself uh, because of the increase of the cap and what we can now sell back, um, I would not have been a proponent of solar if we had to raise taxpayers' money for the county to go solar. But this will eventually pay for itself, and so it's like a savings program because once we paid off the solar field, that's going to come back to us because we're going to be able to sell back more than we made and we're using the ARPA money for it or a portion of the ARPA money for it, not asking the taxpayers to fund it. If some 10 years from down the road when solar is more prevalent and everybody has solar, we're not going to be in this position again, which is my understanding of why solar is on the list. Am I wrong, Bob? No, I think you're right. No, they're looking for uh, green infrastructure improvements. It certainly is a green infrastructure improvement, and the way that they can formulate uh, or, or put together programs for solar these days, they can do it with uh, so that your 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 electric bill essentially wouldn't change. You wouldn't uh, it wouldn't cost the taxpayers money um, to pay for it initially, because what you're paying in electricity would be offset by the solar. So it would be a until the note's paid, and then once the note's paid, it's, it's money in, money in the, in the taxpayer's pocket. Any other questions for for Bob? On his list. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, um, I don't have any a question on that. I'm, I want to refer back to the um, water and sewer infrastructure, and I think that this this final rule here um, pro, pro, provides additional incentive to to get people to do this, to clean up the water and sewer by permitting funds to be used for water and sewer infrastructure, Congress recognized the critical role that clean drinking water and services for collection and treatment of wastewater and stormwater play in protecting the public health. Well, and this sewer, the interim final rule provides these governments with wide latitude to identify investments in water and sewer infrastructure and at the highest priority for their own community, com, com, you know, communities can't speak anymore. <clears throat> so I, all I'm saying is that I think we should move ahead with the water and sewer because I think there's special incentive for that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's pretty clear that they're giving us the widest in, in interpretation so we can go ahead and um, do what we feel we need to do to improve the system. I mean, I know as soon as they look at the tank, it's gonna, they're going to say they need, you need to start with a new tank. And then, and I don't know how much of the, you said last week that the, uh, the pipes in the ground are fairly new. I don't know what, how new they are, but, I'm sorry, that, that's what? all. <laughs> um, if we want to just kind of try to answer a lot of those questions, if we just want to move into to my list of that, and on the top is the tank. Um, obviously, we have a, a, some repairs that need to be done in there. Um, I had another engineer firm uh, contact me this week, and I took them out on a tour on our system. They're submitting a, um, a bid for the water uh, study as well. And it was very educational in some of the things that I learned from this gentleman, so it's going to be interesting to see how the stuff comes out. But one of the things which I wondered about, and he, he talked about it, was our daily average usage is around 17,000, 18,000 gallons, and we got a 200,000 gallon tank. And so he said that the state often recommends like a five to seven, you know, close to a week's worth of water 
not too much more than that because then you get stagnant water in your in your tank and obviously we have more than that seven to, you know five to seven days storage capabilities so and he said that's not a problem so he what we might be looking at is fixing the tank current tank we have and they also have different uh, agitation systems that they can install in, in tanks like that so that we could be moving the water better so we don't have the stagnant water sitting in our tank so there's some things that I think that are really going to come out with um, that's one thing. This, this gentleman's also working with another company that, that's a combined that's going to come in probably on this study, and they're out, of, they're out of Concord, I think it was, and they focus on source, on your sources. So we've have, we're having a major problem, I think, with one of our bedrock wells up there. And I was talking to him, and he says, a new source is kind of the last thing on the table. There's a lot of things they can come in and refrack it. They can, there's different things they can do to your current source without having to do a new source and we could look at all those options ahead of time. Mm -hmm. A lot of what's missing for us to give him that information is a lot of our, our metering system, so to speak, of how much is our wells going up and down, uh, how much are we actually pumping. Um, there's a lot of upgrades to our system that need to be done to monitor it for a short amount of time and then they can make those recommendations on how to fix things once they know what it's doing. Um, and there's a lot more technology out there than that's common technology in most water and sewer systems, in particular water systems, that we're lacking. We don't have those those upgrades. And a lot of it, you know, like right now I get a daily, I get a, a email that comes on my computer that tells me what the water level is in our tank. But that same system is capable of telling me what each of our wells is. I mean, there's so many more things that could be added on that we need to upgrade in this technology into our current system to answer a lot of those questions. So that goes to my number two uh, side is, is sources. I think that um, a lot of this information that comes back with some of these experts, en engineers that specialize in these things, are going to be able to help us set up right. these monitoring systems and whatnot. And it, you know. He said, yes, a, a new source may, be pot, may have to happen, but he said that's really the last step that they look at. They look at, you know, there's a lot of technologies out there to fix the current uh, sources that we have that we can look at before we worry about a new source. So that's those ones. The, the um, main, the four-inch main uh, pipe that runs down the village, I did look on our current mapping systems, and uh, our current as-built plans, if you will, um, to, to bring in a copy for you guys, but it doesn't because our system was upgraded in 2001 That wasn't part of the upgrade, so it's not on the current as built So I have n nothing that shows th this I call it like a spur so to speak that comes off of our main water line that runs down It kind of starts if everybody's familiar with corner off speed the, the center right there And it runs down towards the fire department and it runs all the way down to the old state shed That's the line we're talking about for anybody that's familiar with corner off speed. Um, that's just a four inch that comes off there. Now talking to the gentleman again, touring the system, he said that yeah we may want to upgrade that but we may not need to upgrade too much on the size but the type of pipe that's in there because it's a really old pipe and it's PVC. They make a lot, they make things now that um, you don't always want to go with a ductile iron iron. He said there's other plastics out there that are even stronger and last longer than the ductile iron. And so there's a lot of technologies out there, again, on replacing that, you know, that we may look at with this study. Um, he said, you know, just a rough ballpark figure, you know, you might be looking at $60, $70 a foot for replacement down through there um, on that with some of these other things. So, again, I think that this gentleman that I talked with, I was quite impressed talking with him on the tour of the different things that, um, that are out there to bring to our, you know, bring to us on people that, you know, I'm mostly just the operator on it, you know, I'm not every day in the industry to know all the new things that came out, so that's why I think it's important having someone that can help point those things out to us. The hydrants, I had, don't know if Melissa had sent that to, to you guys, I did get a price on two different hydrants um, to start with through EJPs. We're looking at about, just for the hydrants themselves, we're looking at around $25 to $2,600 a hydrant. Uh, I know, Representative Lino, you were asking about that at the last meeting. Um, and that's not installed, that's just the hydrants themselves, and then we'll, we'll have to install those and or get someone um, to, to help us with the digging for that, possibly. Um, those are two different styles, that's just where I'm starting. Probably later this month or beginning of next month, I got a representative coming out that, uh, from, from the manufacturer to 
learn a little bit more on the different these two different styles and how they work. Um, doesn't mean obviously that we'll go through that company, but educate us a little bit more on how those work. Um, so that's kind of a rough estimate there on the hydrants. Another thing I mentioned, um, and I and I mentioned this to the gentleman that was out this week, is upgrading our water meters. Right now, we currently have to go to every meter and and physically touch it, um, the homes, and that's becoming very outdated in today's industry. You know, a lot of them are all up, upgraded to where we'll be able to drive through with the truck, just like your electric company and everything does, and it's going to read it um, right from the truck um, for that. So that's. Uh, on my, on my list of wanting to look at doing. Um, and then we talked about the possible new source, but again, um, if they can fix the sources we have, or the one source in particular, um, that'll be interesting to see how that comes back. Currently we have two bedrock wells, and then we have a, a dug well is what we call it, but it's three dug wells that pour into one. Our bedrock two provides 95% of our water or more and so the other ones are more just backups but if they can't supply theoretically we should just be able to turn off that main one and those other two should supply the same amount as what that main one does and if that can't happen which I have a feeling isn't happening then we don't have a proper backup to our water system um, so that's part of the study that they're going to look at is can these two meet our current daily demand and whatever future demands that we may have um, and they have they have uh, matrices and everything that tells them you know looking 20 30 years ahead of possible growth or whatever that could happen demand wise um, so that'll all be part of the part of the study but that's a concern the last two times I've been up there to run that well um, to get our PFAS testing we're shooting a lot of water out of out of the hose and that's not a very good sign he said because either the water level is low um, there's a couple things that can, can factor in it but either way when you turn it on and there's water shooting or air shooting out when there should be water that's a sign we got some troubles up there um, so these will be important things to have looked at and then that thing that Bob had just read uh, off about improvements is, and it's lower on the priority list obviously but uh, we did have some work done on the road going up there about halfway up there but the other half is in really rough shape uh, currently we don't plow up there um, we take a snow machine up there in the winter time to, to check on it um, I can get up there with the backhoe if we have an emergency and we can we can plow it all out to get up there if it if, you know if possible but it's not a regularly it's not a thing easy to do regularly so if we did possibly have money left like I said it's lower on the priority list and hopefully maybe it would fit in there is to improve the the road to to get up to to work on that stuff but that's lower on the like I said on the priority list is the uh, is the generator up there big enough to accommodate any new pumps that may need to be installed I think so but he did take a picture of that the guy that was out because it's a 45,000 I think um, when we looked at it, and so he's going to have that in his calculations of, of um, what they'll be doing. Okay. He thought it would be, and he, he looked at it, but um, it's definitely on his radar with the guy that came out, and I think it's definitely a good question to, to ask as we get going through all these okay. upgrades. Yes, Representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would ask that the um, generator for the sewer and the generator for pumps be moved into wills. Um, list. Yeah, I second that. Thank you. Uh, Just so we can be clear, clear, we can kind of separate what we want to do um, on one project, and then we can have the water and sewer. Water be one part, sewer be a second part, and that way we're not commingling and, and discussing back and forth. If it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Any further questions for a motion? Or something was seconded, Madam Chair. Oh, was that a motion? So it's your meeting. We can't. Right, but it was seconded. So is there a motion on the floor? I'm just procedurally up to be I think he may agree to it, and I'm good with that. Yeah, no, I don't think we need to. Yeah. Okay. No. That's uh, the official scribe. <laughs> okay. Follow up, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, for the net metering solar array under 4.2, the clearer guidance. Under 602C1A or 603C1A, a general infrastructure project typically would not be considered a response to the public health emergency and its negative economic impacts unless the project responds to a specific 
pandemic-related public health need, investments in facilities for delivery of vaccines, or a specific negative economic impact of the pandemic. Um, I would just, if there's a question on that, I would send in a query to Treasury to see if a new solar array would be under a general eligible use. When do we have to have breakfast students in July, right? July 9th. Coming right up. Um, and right above it, under six, uh, the paragraph right above it, recipients may use funds for maintenance of infrastructure or pay-go spending for building of new infrastructure as part of the general provisions of government services to the extent of the estimated reduction in revenue due to the public health emergency. Seeing as we have not reasonably received a reduction in revenue as we are won by taxes, um, I think it would be a stretch to have a large solar array um, under this for right now, unless we get clarification from Treasury that we, it is an eligible use. Any other questions? Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Did you want to say something? No, I'm just confused. Never mind. It's no, immaterial. Okay. Did you have a question? No, Mr. Kelman. I think we need to look carefully at how, how the revenue loss is defined. I'm in agreement with that. Yes. Before making a determination. Representative? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think the air handling part of this would be a good um, recommendation to the full delegation when we accept the funds at our next meeting. Um, how long? With that approval, Bob, how long would it take for you to get this out to bid and get this up and running, or get this reasonably done, do you think, this year? To get, um, to get a project off the ground? Correct. Uh, you got a, a supplementary budget? No, it would be coming out, of, coming out of these funds. Yeah, we have to pay for it first, right? We have to accept, we would accept the revenue, and then we would authorize expenditures based on what you needed, because they're not part of the budget. <clears throat> if the delegation gives me the go-ahead, I, um, I could start working on an RFP immediately, and um, whether it gets done by the end of the year or not would be tricky, uh, I'm sure, because there's a lot of engineering involved. Uh, things like this don't happen overnight. This is just, uh, you know, taking a price off of a shelf. Um, but it would certainly happen in 2022. Correct, yeah, we have two, we have two years. 2024. Yeah. So on the front page. Two Plenty of time years. to do it, yeah. I don't yeah. know if I could get it done this year, but uh, definitely next year. We could at least get, get a price in, get it started. Get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling, yes. Thank you. And follow up, Madam Chair? Yes. And I think part of Will's um, should be Definitely the hydrants should be no problem. Um, if you have the water study done, um, and then how they're going to want to stagger what you need to be done in order right. from that study uh, would be, definitely would be a recommendation to the delegation. Um, but I think the hydrants should stand alone. I would talk with um, Town of Osprey to see what they use for hydrants, so at least if there's a fire here, they would match the technology that they're used to right. yep. would be something that we would, you know, at least get their input to whatever kind they use that would be. And then if you needed parts and they have parts, or if you're out of parts or something happens, they could, you know, might have them in house. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, um, yes, well. Just out of curiosity, we're talking about hydrants standing alone of a project. Would we? consider that water meters would be in that same category, kind of a project of its own, after we maybe accomplish hydrants or something like that? It depends how much pipe you're replacing. I wouldn't see putting meters in unless you're replacing pipes, too. I think that should go together, since okay. water meters here, if you're replacing pipes on the ground here and then putting the water meters in as you're replacing the pipes, I guess would be, unless I'm Incorrect. I think he wants to replace the water meters more widely than the area where he has to replace the pipes. You want to, you want to, you're talking about the retail water meters. I want to go system wide. 
So I would, I'd like, which we've asked for, I know Representative McConkie and I have talked for years about getting high, uh, meters on each of the buildings here on the complex, but it's always not made the budget. So I'd like to do that, but I'd also like these upgrades throughout the whole system um, so we can, you know, it's all all in the same program, so to speak, and we can drive right down through. So I didn't Put know if that... Together. Yeah. Right. So we do it one. Yeah, okay. Then I'll work on this salesman, because uh, EJPs does the hydrants and they do water meters. I'm not saying we're going with them, but they give us a good start for right budgeting up, purposes. Right, up to make sure that we're going with them. Sorry, Madam Chair. That's okay. I just want to make sure that we're following, um, if the grant is requiring us to make sure everything goes out to bid and whatnot, that we're following their guidelines for at least oh, of course. sourcing right. RFPs and whatnot and doing it by the book. Yeah, I, I assume that would have, I, don't, I just assume that that has to happen anyways, but I'm just looking for a, a place to start for budgeting purposes, you know, an estimate from somebody like we did with the hydrants already. Well, I completely agree. I just want to make sure that we're at least get some projects up and off the ground so we can start using some of this money because it is quite a bit. Okay, if that's all everyone has for Will. And we, Deirdre, do you have something for us? Well, I, unfortunately, you know, I've just been here a few days, but I did have an opportunity to speak with John, our IT person. And, and talk to him about the situation at Mountain View regarding the server. I understand that the server is the oldest on the county at this point and it's due to come up for replacement at some point. Um, I would question that. We also discussed that there was a disaster drill about a year and a half where you guys did a drill with the plane crashing into the admin building and the loss of um, IT services and such like that. Um, one of the things that did come up was that both um, the main fiber optic to the county for its IT and such, the backup or redundant system is also fiber. So if a tree went down or a pole went down, we would lose both our main source of um, uh, IT or cybersecurity, everything, and the backup. And there was some discussion from him was that there was um, a wireless broadband service that is in New Hampshire that might be an option as the backup or redundant system. So in the event a car accident took out a pole, we would not lose our backup system as well. And I would encourage maybe taking a look at that. I haven't had the chance to sit down and meet with him, but that was a discussion in talking about our server and the cybersecurity as well as any type of... Um, you know, backup systems that are going to protect us. So that was a question that came up as far as cybersecurity. We do have redundant uh, internet. Our, our primary internet is off on fiber, as you know. Mm -hmm. Our secondary internet is on uh, spectrum cable. Um, but a pole could take out two and one. Even though they're two different services, the right pole you could have That's right. both lost in one event. That has happened. We've been down. <clears throat> So with this new wireless broadband that does come in as that being a backup system, should we lose one in an accident, we would not lose our backup system. And the only other thing that I, uh, Madam Chair, would bring up is that I know that it's been discussed about premium pay for the staff at the nursing home and as part of this program it does allow for a premium pay to our staff who have been essential workers during, throughout COVID. And I, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, Paula had submitted some uh, documentation on supporting some increases for staff. And so I would offer that up for consideration as well. Representative? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, compensation of employees should be held in a different venue. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for our new nursing administrator? If it's okay, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Bob? If it's okay, um, I'm going to put a backup wireless internet service on my list. Okay. <clears throat> Representative? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I think one of the uses is updating um, cybersecurity for... I think you're right. I think I saw that somewhere. For... Um, <laughs> health care. Um, mm -hmm. Things like that, so I think I'm trying to find it. I couldn't find it. So. Right. My recollection is that's clearly allowable use, so I think yeah. you should just add it to your list. Yep, add it to your list. Cybersecurity, or yep, there it is. Yeah. That one doesn't have to. What number of references that? That one doesn't have to show an right. 
box. Just all my own. Do you have that number in there? I can't. Oh, it's 3.8. Oh, that one, we have the wrong section. <laughs> I was thinking in the FAQs. It's also mentioned in 6.1. 6.1 6 is probably a better reference. <coughs> 6.1 might support the solar. It does say uh, eligible projects under the DWSRF and the CWSRF support efforts to address climate change. So I think you could uh, sell solar as that. Uh, I would think so. It's not as obviously or clearly allowable as uh, water and sewer. Yeah, it clarifies it under 6.1 that could be used for Yeah, the last paragraph of 6.1 is, is useful for that. Yeah. And to replace lead service lines. Do we have any lead? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we have any lead on and antibiotic pipes? And are we using lead pipes? Not that I'm aware of. Unless, Bob, do you know of anything in the inside the buildings? Thank you. Any further discussion on that? If not, we will go to Lisa. Do you have something for us? I do. I do. So the Deeds Office I consider a critical infrastructure. Uh, imagine the impact if the registry had shut down during COVID. It would have been traumatic to our real estate economy, the sales of land records, recording of mortgages and liens. So uh, we were able to, we weren't ready, we were unprepared, but we were lucky. And we put into place some uh, preventative measures. You allowed us to buy some laptops. I sent a couple of our staff home to work from uh, remotely. Uh, it was, uh, it worked. We got through it without a strong security system. And we need to deal with that. We need to secure a plan to have a secure remote workplace for the Registry of Deeds. We also have our land records management system, the retrieval section, which people look at online. It's running off of an obsolete uh, program, a Java program, which isn't being supported anymore, which makes it very vulnerable to, uh, it's vulnerable. I don't really want to go into it too much. So I have, um, made some efforts recently to look for systems and <coughs> rethink the registry's infrastructure. Currently, we don't own any of our equipment and we pay a pretty penny to a vendor to manage all our land records management systems. So I've been looking at purchasing equipment using in-house IT and have been working with a vendor who is preparing a land records management system that will replace the one that we currently have. So there's an investment to do this, but and this is directly related to cybersecurity, directly related to COVID. We've never had ever thought of working remotely before. Um, it would be, uh, it would very much enhance and, and secure this land records for the county, which I think is very critical. Um, the investment would be equipment and software that I think would be appropriate for, for these funds. The maintenance of it would, I would think, come out of the general budget every year. So we don't own any of our equipment. I'm thinking it will be somewhere between forty to fifty thousand dollars to uh, get desktops and monitors and and three servers. So we have to have backups. Um, have 
IT involved and, and then to purchase the land records management system, if we did it all at once, it would be approximately 150 to 180,000. So I'm thinking the whole package could be somewhere around 230 to 250, 230,000 to 250,000 to buy into it. And then we would have, instead of um, the current lease system that we have, which depends on dock account, we would have uh, a smaller maintenance that would be an annual budget item. Yes, thank you. A uh, uh, question. Uh, did your revenue go down due to, site, due to COVID-19? Our revenue went up because everybody wanted to move here. That, that was my understanding. I mean, a follow-up yes. statement. Yes. I'd refer people to FAQ 6.6, uh, the second sentence, where it says recipients may also use funds for modernization of cybersecurity, including hardware, software, and protection of critical infrastructure as part of the provision of government services up to the amount of revenue lost due to the public health emergency. And I would contend that given that the revenue went up significantly as opposed to going down, it would be very hard to uh, justify using these funds uh, with that being the sentence that the Treasury has put out. I believe that Bob read to you page 60. Our critical infrastructure needs to be dealt with, our cybersecurity. And go ahead. Well, do you think that, these, uh, that your revenue gain this year is only a temporary uh, effect of the COVID response? I don't know the answer to that. I, it depends on if COVID goes away or... I mean, life changed for everybody. People, life changed. People, people moved and bought houses and readjusted the way yes. that they lived. That can't continue. I think that was a short-term response to, to COVID. So I think you could be looking at uh, lesser revenues in the future. Cybersecurity is... <clears throat> huge here. Um, we are, because of COVID now, we, you know, we were prior to COVID probably 40% recordings, e-recordings online. We're now at 70% e-recordings. Um, it is the mainstream and it's vulnerable and I hold my breath that we get through and fix our system before something happens. And, uh, yeah. Madam Chair, I don't uh, argue with the fact that this is a wonderful program and something that we truly need. I'm just questioning whether the U.S. Treasury is going to allow us to use this money to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. So the FAQ does say that the money can be spent on cyber security. Yeah. Up to the amount of revenue loss. And 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 the staffing, which has all had to change because directly staffing as a result a of COVID. Staffing is a different issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, but working remotely. Still different. Different issue, and, and the calculation of revenue loss is something we need to look into and not make assumptions about. So, uh, my interpretation was that it, this is not based on revenue loss explicitly. That that can be a factor, but it doesn't have to be a factor. That's it. One more okay. question. Second ahead. question. It would be a okay. good interpretation. Good second question. <laughs> it would be helpful. Okay. Do we, any other questions for the register? No comments? Hmm. Yes. I guess I'm trying to formulate this question, but I think that um, the intent of the program is to ensure that you're not trying to make up for lost revenue. If you, and if you have excess, excess revenue, it, it's just the opposite. So I mean, it would still be permitted. And it's, it says right there, cybersecurity, hardware, software. Um, mm -hmm. but, but, but the point I was trying to make was that in, in, other, in other places where I read that, um, that, that if you're trying to make up for lost revenue, that's, a, that's that's something that's not allowed. So if you, but she's not. The registry is not making up for lost revenue. They have more revenue than than the year before. Mm -hmm. But we have a different operating procedure because specifically because of COVID that we have not addressed, and I need to. 
questions? No, no. Yes, I don't even know where we are anymore. <laughs> as, as we were through everyone's list. I'm sure that as we send the list around, people will knock items off. We need prices for things. I don't, I don't know how much more fruitful this meeting can be until we have concrete numbers and start prioritizing. Um, it seems that we just rehashed everything we did last week about talking about all of these projects, and we only have real numbers on my account for three of them. So I think we have a lot of work still to do. My hope this week was that we were going to prioritize the list so that we wouldn't be wasting these fine folks' time um, in going out and getting prices, but it seems like we've actually made zero progress from the last meeting. Mr. Cobble, you had a... Thank you, Madam Chair, for taking my question. The, um, what's the process here? Are you going to... What's the process that the federal government has set up? Are you just supposed to come up with the most probable thing that they're going to accept and then send it to them, but then say, yes, it's okay, yes, it's not, yes, it is, no, it isn't? How is that going to work? And wouldn't it be better to come up with a prioritized list even if you're not sure, and just simply have somebody somewhere else tell you, is this going to work, is this going to work, is this going to work? That way, RP, RFPs can go out. Even a contractor would understand that this money might be coming down, and they may get the job, but what is the process that they're having us follow? Because I don't know what it is. Commissioner Fletch? I don't have a response to that. I, I do. You were waving your hand. Okay. I, I, thank you former Representative Camo for so eloquently expressing what I just tried to say, which is I think we need to start itemizing this priority list and figuring out, because if we're not going to talk about solar, who cares whether or not it's in the guidance if we're not going to, we're just spinning our wheel here versus getting prices for the things we actually want to do. Also, if something costs $9.5 million and that's the project we want to do, we don't really need to delve too far into other projects. So before we have numbers, I mean, it sounds to me, based on the comments from that side of the room and that table over there, that Will's project list is of the utmost priority and seems to fit within the guidelines. So how much of Will's priority list is going to take up the 9.5 mil so we're not wasting Mr. Murray's time or the registrar's time or the nursing home administrator's time in figuring out the rest of these projects? Um, I. It's my understanding, Will, and take me if I'm wrong, that you need these studies to come in to give you more concrete numbers on what we're talking about for costs for your projects. Yes, ma'am. But I don't want to spend another, we've now been here an hour and 12 minutes. We were here three hours last week talking about our list, and that's all we have gotten done. And we don't seem to have a consensus still, um, other than on that side of the room, about what is in a guidance and what isn't in a guidance. So perhaps I've taken the lists that were circulated plus the nursing home administrators and the registrars, combined one list, issued what the description of it is, what department it falls under, and a projected cost, and we should start thinking about prioritizing them um, and moving things up and down the list uh, for our next meeting so that we have an understanding of what projects we're going to look into and which ones we're not, because I don't want to continue having meetings about the same projects over and over again if we're not going to consider them. That would be my suggestion, Madam Chair, which ties into Representative Como's about how we're going to, former Representative Como's, about how we're going to proceed further. Honorable. Honorable. The Honorable Como. So Sorry. Far. So far. Now, do you have something to say? I do. Okay. On an unrelated point. Yes, go ahead. Because I think Kim eloquently stated what she wanted to say. Uh, we're only discussing, so far as I can tell, projects that immediately affect the county government, county complex. Uh, we're not talking at all about an, another huge aspect of, of the funding eligibility, which is to benefit people in the community, support people in the community that have been hurt by this pandemic, people who lost their jobs, don't have enough to eat. Uh, also, uh, broadband for the community. Uh, the uh, you know we we have a huge huge latitude we have huge latitude to spend money on, on broadband for the community in unserved or underserved areas 
as long as, as we're providing 100 by 100 service, which is what it should be at a minimum, uh, that's, which is a lot faster than the FCC currently defines broadband. But um, it's what it should, needs to be or higher. And we do have places in this county that don't have it yet. So maybe that's something we should talk about too. Uh, as we go forward, and just look at some of those other uses, ways to ways to support people in our community, not just ways to spend money here at the county council. Uh, oh, I see a bunch of hands. Okay, uh, Representative Marsh. Yeah, I, I want just to to uh, agree with, with uh, Commissioner Fletch because broadband is clearly allowed under this. Uh, broadband has been a clear problem for the citizens, as far as remote education, as far as telemedicine is concerned as far as substance use treatment is concerned, so it meets the needs that we really want to be addressing here. And, and, and I think some sort of project to address the areas of the county where broadband is not available uh, at the thresholds allowed on this would, would very much be. And if I may? Uh, just a second. Representative Alaney, you had your hand up? No. Oh. That was not you guys. Okay. So, uh, and, and supporting small businesses that have been hurt by, this, by the pandemic as well, uh, and assisting those small businesses, um, possibly assisting people to get access to broadband when they can't have it in the home, maybe for, maybe even providing some space here at the county complex in, in the annex if it gets redone. Uh, that could be part of that project, having some rooms available for small businesses to hold meetings in if they need to and don't have another place to do it to, to help them get started. I mean, really. Yeah, it could be a good economic boom to the community. And may say that the broadband might be an office for them to work out of. Yeah, they might. Okay. Along those lines, there's a lot of uh, a lot of young new farmers in Carroll County. There's been a huge amount of interest in uh, homesteading and, and growing people people wanting to grow their own food directly as a result of this pandemic, both both livestock. As well as vegetables, and have, you know, uh, and uh, the county extension is, is has had a banner year of interest in their programs. They've been doing Zoom programs, they've been doing online programs, and there's so many people watching that. So we could do things here related to agriculture, and we kind of are an agricultural community still, at least this county. Uh, we could do some of that here at the county complex. Make possibly making programs available to support the community that way as well. So we should kind of, I'd like to think a little bit along those lines as well as we move forward. Well, I had a quick question and just um, along the lines of what um, Ed was saying about other than the federal end, but here on the county end, once we say this committee comes up with the different priorities that, that um, we're talking about, is this kind of like our regular almost we got to go through the commissioners and then we're going to go through the delegation and is that that whole normal process is that how everything will get approved okay that's all i was just curious if that's how we're just prioritizing object uh, we're just prioritizing a list here coming up with numbers for that list and then we'll go through our regular budget yeah. ways to pay for things yes yes well it was our hope to streamline that because it's $9.5 million and we can do a lot of projects and we didn't want to waste all you folks time. So that's why we invited these fine gentlemen. That seems more and more unlikely by the moment to be the case. Um, but that was our hope that we wouldn't waste your time and you could focus your efforts on particular projects, kind of knowing the direction, which is why a prioritized list would assist you in figuring out what that is. But I suspect, um, it doesn't really matter what we do until it goes to them for final say. So, but I would get your list and ready and focus your presentations on those fine folks. Representative. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the um, delegation was invited to be part of this committee, and I think that it is a, a, a good place to start. Um, sitting here saying that we've wasted four hours of people's time is a little bit short-sighted. Um, We've asked Bob to come up with a presentation to the delegation on the air handling systems. We've given Will three items that should be coming before the delegation 
when we accept the fund money in at our next meeting, um, following the process is to make sure that one, the money is spent correctly. Two, seeing as there was no budgetary items or line items to allow these upgrades, the delegation would have to approve their expenditure, whether that is through transfers or however the commissioners wish to set it up, we would approve how that is handled. Um, having us here gives you a clear direction into an idea of how to bring it to the delegation to make sure that it can be accepted quickly and we can move forward with projects that are relatively easy, fit right into these guidelines, and have the ability to move forward with the simple items like hydrants. Shouldn't be a problem getting to the delegation at our next meeting. Simple, real easy. We can click that off the list. Water meters, we've been talking about that. Falls great within this to upgrades, no problem. Replacing the four inch main, again, out of this money, no problem. Air handlers, no problem. Um, if that displeases the commissioners that we want to have these projects come up at our next meeting, um, I can't see how this isn't progress moving forward to having items on these lists that are approved. So I would um, make sure that we're working co cooperatively and not um, looking to make for reasons to have people say that we're wasting time. I think that that is unproductive. Um, also under 10.5 to form Representative Fomo's point, recipients use funds to cover the cost of consultants to assist with managing and administering the funds. Yes, recipients may use funds for administrating the CSFRF and CLFRF program, including cost of consultants to support effective management and oversight, including consultation for ensuring compliance with legal, regulatory, and other requirements. I'm guessing that the commissioners are going to be putting on an RFQ for that um, at the behest of uh, certain commissioners. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're very welcome. Do we have any other business that we'd like to discuss? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, there was mention of the uh, UNH Cooperative Extension. I know that they have some other programs that they have for um, assisting um, uh, within the county, uh, whether it be through food stamps or through other uh, items. And I think. Um, to extend on Commissioner Platch's point to look outside of just projects for um, the county, we should be looking at possibly sending some of this money down to other um, people that handle um, <coughs> other covered mm -hmm. things. So I just want to make sure that maybe we can have them submit a list of items that they think would fall under um, this as well. I know Representative Bucco, you part of their team. <coughs> you the yeah, did, no, did, we not, you. did we not get a, a list from? Yeah, yes, we did. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Talk. So, Go ahead. so they did. They did supply a list of um, supporting public health expenditures. Um, these are the, just the categories. There's other. <clears throat> there's specifics underneath. Addressing negative economic impacts. Um, replacing lost public sector revenue. Providing premium pay and support for essential workers, investing in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Those are the categories that they were able, that they they are able to assist us in. And they have, and then they go down and, and list some of their programs, like the 4-H program. Um, the, the, some of the other programs that they have. Yeah. I, did nobody else get, get this list? Yeah, I couldn't find it in time, Tom, sorry. Yeah, I believe, because I, I, yeah, I've got it, yeah. Well, so short of having someone here from the extension, um, I, can, I, can give, I can give this list to uh, Melissa to make copies or send it out to everybody. That's a good idea. I think we all, I think we all have it. Uh -huh. we have it. Yeah, I think we have it, Tom. Okay. Well, so the, the, this is how the, the cooperative extension is offering to help us with with, um, with these opera funds. I think they would be an excellent addition um, to one of our meetings moving forward, Madam Chair. Okay. 
um, to that point, and when is our next meeting going to be? And what do we expect to have ready for that next meeting? Yes, Representative? Thank you, Madam Chair. I would probably suggest that we get in touch with the um, wireless broadband people. Um, I think that would probably be something that we should look at. And also uh, a representative from UNH Extension. To attend our next meeting. We could yeah. not. Yeah, close. And do we have a date? Anybody? It's acceptable to everybody? Uh, next week is fine if everybody's, mm -hmm. or is that too quick for to get them in? Two weeks, maybe. maybe two weeks. Madam Chair. Okay. Yeah. What is the date on that? I don't know that. The 23rd would be two weeks, ma'am. 23rd? Is that on a Wednesday, too? Yes, ma'am. Is that acceptable to you, guys? Okay. July 9th is also. July 9th is the deadline. Right, so we have to have this. Okay, so we'll have to have this all done so we can get it in by July 9th. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. So what's the date? May I ask, do you know um, when does the delegation meet to accept the funding? We'll be meeting in July to go over our second quarter, so we'll have a public hearing to accept that money and approve some expenditures. So it'll be after the submissions? Submissions of what? Submission. Deadline to submit commit comments to the U.S. Treasury. Yeah, delegation doesn't have anything to do with that. We'll accept the funds that have already been received to improve expenditures going forward. So, yes, Bob. As far as um, pricing um, on this on this list here, I'm not going to have anything concrete. All I'm going to do is have estimates, hmm? uh, just a budget estimate. Um, you know, with it, without engineering happening, uh, these, there's nothing solid that can be given. Oh, I, I agree, but it's definitely a program that we would approve. Okay, I just wanted to make yeah, just the, number, the numbers that I give you are going to be just yeah. budget ballpark numbers. And then, and then my guess is it's probably going to be done through the, the transfer process okay. because we'll be transferring money out of that fund to pay your or to pay the upgrades or to pay the okay. vendors going forward. Yes, reason. May I ask, do you know if it, what your propensity is for the Registry of Deeds cybersecurity upgrades are? I'm not going to say one way or another until we get clarification from Treasury on whether it's an allowable use. It'll be up to the commissioners to bring it to the delegation. Okay. Yes. Um, what it, I'm wondering whether it would be helpful if we had somebody, probably Rick Island, from the Carroll County Broadband Committee attend. Yeah, that's what, yeah, I have that done. Okay. Yeah. At the next meeting. Okay. Um, do you think John Rich? And John Rich, yes. Do you think John Rich should uh, attend? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's going to be on the 23rd, and uh, the time, is that what we want to still meet at 3, or mm -hmm. is it possible to meet a little bit sooner? Like 2? Is that? That'd be tight for me, but okay. we can you can start and I can come here. I'm here all day. I know, and I guess we are too. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I will bow to three o'clock for you, Lena. And then follow up, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I would suggest that we add the uh, server at the nursing home to our um, discussion next week. Comments? Just clarify the, the next meeting date. Of the 23rd, June 23rd. At 3 o'clock here? At 3 o'clock here. Thank three you. or two? Three. Three. Okay. And we will accept a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned at 4.30. Thank, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you.